Welcome back to the PCL, guys, the Paladins Console League. I'm back here on the desk, except, of course, I wouldn't be alone. I'm Fawn or Stefan, whatever it is you guys want to call me, but I'm here with Gore this time. Being able What's to come that? up. Yeah, the last set was, yeah. uh, was a fun one to be able to come through, but a quick one. And so now we get to be here as we watch, yeah. I believe, Eastorm and, and a new face that's not a new face and classified right. that is Cats on Mars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, We were talking about it a little bit beforehand, like really off of camera, but the fact that classified is not necessarily an entirely new team, quote unquote, air quotes there being used for a second. It is Cats on Mars. They are just swapping names i'm not sure the specifics sponsor. of why it is but they yeah. are spot yeah yeah pretty much a sponsor at this point it is still the same team once again just new name new logo yeah. new everything but we're gonna take a look at the xbox standings real quick see where these guys all are lined up hype unit currently 5-0 undefeated classified east storm dc eternity both of them east storm and classified are both 2-3-2-3 two, three, two, three, with dc eternity one and four right now being in dead last but hype unit once again all the way up at the top in terms of na xbox standings right now and that dc eternity logo is something else it's like the shadow lo lot, shadows yeah. logos from the pml that but like scarier yeah. in a way like a little more frightening as it comes down but as you can see i mean between all of it one game here for dc eternal that, that has been able to or eternity that has been picked up mm -hmm. but you're looking at classified being right there with eastorm both of these teams being able to kind of take each other on being tied in sets but not quite tied in maps very similar to what we saw in eu xbox earlier so today is going to kind of signal if Eastorm's here to hang or if Classify right. are doing what they did last phase, which was kind of as time went on, spreading the gap between second and third a little bit and maybe closing that gap between second and first. Yeah, we're going to take a look at the map bands real quick, see what they have in store for us, guys. Jack Falls and Frozen Guard are both gone for Eastorm and Classified, respectively. Follow that up with a Frog Isle and a Shattered Desert, and you guys have, of course, 2 plus 2 equals 4. We have our four map bands all across the board just erased. That is what both teams have decided to go for on those maps. And it leaves, like, some interesting ones open. I mean, again, I mentioned this earlier, where Stone Keep is probably one of the most picked maps when it comes down to console, along with Jack Falls, along with Bright Marsh. Like, those are typically the three that come up the most often, but it doesn't mean you have to go there. Well, as I say that, they go there. Yeah, it's <laughs> Stone Keep being the first map of this entire set. Game one, like I said, like I just said, is up on Stone Keep. So I'm curious to see what these guys are going to end up drafting. Of course, in the console league, you'll probably see a few other bands and picks that aren't you aren't used to seeing like that one for one being vivian they do want to opt to get rid of her up on the board east storm takes her out classify opting to go for the talus in response to that and i mean yeah i mean these are pretty standard bands all around that you would expect to see the genos is gone once again don't want to be able to give luminary buff to some hit scan targets and then the atlas at the very end i think honestly out of all of these the one that stands out the most would have to be Vivian. She's kind of been skirting the edge of whether or not people want to ban her lately. She's been let through several times. Same thing with Victor, who both of them can be bannable champs. They just decide to came, kind of ignore them this time around. Victor going right. through, though. It's been Choose big. Uh, in the past, either, it was always big for Counter. Eastorm, though, have gone through, you know, little changes here and there. So I believe Counter's on front line nowadays. But I will fight honestly, anybody who plays this guy is going to make him look good. Yeah, I agree with that. Tyra and Inara are both being locked. In response to the Victor pick here, obviously, Inara being able to have more of that frontline presence, being able to stay on the point, do what she needs to. Of course, Tyra Hunter's mark goes without saying. We've seen the damage it can do today. We've seen the damage it can do always up until next patch coming up on this Wednesday. Anyway, but I digress. Khan and Barrett are being locked in on East Storm's side in response to that as well. Khan, Barrett. Both really, really good tanks for this map. Yeah, honestly, East Storm, that's just a solid lineup. I mean, a solid three. No matter what support we'll you get for it, I think you're going to be comfortable with it. And then you choose one other DPS. And as long as they just don't flop, you're going to be perfectly fine. Now, I would say probably someone more aggressive here for East Storm towards the end, just because Victor does a lot of damage, but he does it from pretty far away. You want someone who can maybe close that gap and right. either pick up the kill that Victor isn't able to or set them up so that if they take one step out of line, Victor can pop them off. And I 
Mm. Not well, gonna lie, I was actually thinking today. of Koga. We saw him on Bright Marsh last set, and, and it's just so good against Tyra, so good maybe even against like the Furia, things like that, where he can open up a lot of space. I agree, along with the fact that they did end up picking the Grover, so we see Grover with a lot of death ball -y compositions where people yeah. try and steamroll really, really early on, try and make sure they can gain their advantage and keep that advantage. However, if there was anybody to ever try and counter out that Grover, it would be one. Well, I'm actually really excited. With Grover, you typically kind of ball up in an area. Right. That's the goal. Willow is, is the perfect counter to that. She's been banned a lot of today. Yeah. We saw her kind of start getting banned last week. So I think Classified with that might have maybe given them the edge on this matchup. Yeah, I entirely agree. East Storm versus Classified, game one on Stone Key. We're going to throw it right down to the casters to take us in. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Our fourth and final set of this Monday console week action about to kick off. East Storm versus Classified. Should be a fun one here on Stone Keep. Dolson and Kresnik on the cast for you. Get our look at another Willow here, Kres. Did you know that there's a small gaming in East Storm's logo? Yeah, it's like right beneath I their actually, little. I'm sorry, uh, I was just, I was still surprised at that. Right beneath actually, the little uh, Storm Cloud thing. Right? And so the full name has been eStorm Gaming this oh, whole time? Oh, you mean there's a word game? Yeah, I thought you says, meant like the little game pad that's been No, no, like it the says the word gaming. Oh, no, that I didn't know. Uh, next time, we'll, we'll take a look at, at it. On the next yeah, screen, yeah. It, it threw me off. But yeah, you're right. Willow, she's I, double I'm Willow so Tyra. Itty. It's interesting. That's like double point presence. You know, yeah. that's double kind of screw your point tank. We're going to deal with whatever else we can. And you can already see Regan kind of just baiting for this angle. And he does find it, but it's a Koga. So he's going to be able to walk right away. And I love that. Good flank by Koga, kind of negated by the presence of this Willow. Yeah, wow. Well, I'm going to take one too many shots if I'm Pots, and back to base I go. Mr. Pickles, first kill on this one. Good Makoa hook. Reels in the Atlas, and the commander's grab not a way to escape the danger. Classified are bringing three kills, all for red as E Storm backpedal back to base. Just now getting onto the point. 18%. Another hook onto the healer this time around. Oh my, dishonor. Not long for this world. This is a great zoning composition, too. I mean, Firebomb in one path, Dead Zone in the other, two kills immediately for Regan here. This Koga's gonna try to get in, but he's gonna have to use all his energy to get this touch, and already in the Dead Zone means he's not even getting the, the health back for it. They're gonna throw counter on, but he doesn't even get a chance to touch. Now the Khan's gonna have to go on, too, but Classified have such good presence here. Yeah, they're just, they're, they're throwing bodies at the pile, but not even making it anywhere towards the mid. A good fight from Classified. Controlled that high ground early on. Didn't turn back from there. The uh, the Makoa doing a great job of, of really controlling that space on the opposite side of the map. Good fight back from East Storm. You, you so often see these payload pushes just start to tumble out of control. They capture mid. You're staggered out. This time around, the East Storm going to drag in their heels on defense. And the coordination, I think, from Classified was really good too. The hooks were finding yeah. marks. You know that's how they were getting those kills so early. Now East Storm, strong defensive position in this keep, just trying to lock them out. Once they get all their spawns, though, I think Classified will probably engage the Fae Flight in flame combo. Very potent, lots of damage, kind of cleaving the whole team. And they do have the Victor to deal with it, but if he goes down immediately, now the counter's completely gone. Well, Fae Flight and Flame both used. Inhard, that's a nice double kill for the Tyra this time around. Some good shots going into the back of Barrack. This is going to be a clean fight from Classified. They lose Vivian. The name Vivian, Makoa being played by Vivian, but uh, classified and clean up the rest of it. Only now back and respawning is the Makoa payload, though inching closer. But you're right, they burn the inflame, they burn the uh, the Faith Light just to get back to that payload, just to get that progress moving in the right direction. I don't think it's that bad. Two fast no. charging ultimates, they'll be able to do it. And I gotta say, I was kind of laughing watching that Faith Light because it was almost like a, like creeping right next yeah. to whoever it was, and you can get away with that now. With how, sure. how quickly you can move with Fae Flight, how you can cancel it, that's an option you have. If you did that before, they would have gone around a corner and you would have taken about an hour of like, <laughs> backing out of the parking spot. But now they have that mobility. I think I heard an overpower did not connect, so yeah. gets the refund, but now they're going to pressure up top. The Inheart going down is going to make things a lot harder for Classified. Yeah, the crossfire was used as well. Didn't find anything. And East Storm are going to push this 4v5. Now, 3v5 for Classified. They're backpedaling off. 30 seconds left. Get a little look at Koga in this one as well. He's uh, a, a champion that we saw a good bit of last split in the PCL and, and sort of hit or miss up to this point. But uh, Pot's doing his best to forge that one towards victory. 
Regan was doing a lot of cleave damage there too, but honestly, Pau just completely staggered this fight. If Pau hadn't been up there, I think Classified could have snowballed this and kept it going forward, but now they're going to have to throw a tank away basically to touch the point. Vivian getting dangerously low, no cooldowns means Eastern will get that defense right away. Great play by him to, to own that in the back. They just didn't clear that in time, and that's the, thing, the only survival yeah. chance they had against how much damage Regan was doing. I think I'm just going to have to say Makoa, as long as Vivian is not playing the champion named Vivian. <laughs> it's it's not a bad call. It's, it's, it's probably not. Tied up at one, though. Classified E-Storm. Looking for the first win in this set. Victor at 3-3-5 three, three, and five is top one damage storm. in this game. Willow, Regan right behind it. Ian Hart as well. 5-3-6. and six. So lots for Classified to uh, feel good about rounding out that five, first side. Four. Uh, Brockus, the only one really having a one. tough time on the front lines there. Plenty of healing, though, for Classified. As we move into this next mid, looking at the ultimates, everything but Crossfire for Classified. Essentially everything but Whirlwind. Restorm as the high ground battle begins. Down drops the Dome Shield, and Flame comes out as well as the Fae Flight. Pots with the first blood. Regan trying to find the flank. He does find it. Doesn't have the damage, though. x -Pow lives with one burst, and Eastorm are running away with this fight. He goes a little bit too close to Pau. You're not going to be able to win that damage fight, even with the Inflame, I think, backing you up. Vivian is still alive, though, and no cap time is being had, so as Cyclone Strikes get traded on the other side, Vivian's still owning this area. Oh. Does trade at the end, but that retake's actually good. I feel like yeah. the spawners are coming at a better time for Classified. Yeah, you're right. Classified are coming back as one big wave. Privy to that is Barrack on the opposite side, who's going to rocket boots his way. Contest range, counter. May have been able to stay a little bit longer. Regan, though, gets caught out by the commander's grab. Potts drops that one off. Another numbers advantage for Eastorm here. Still have the overpower if they choose to use it. 63% on the point for them. X-Pow firing away from the high ground. Relatively untouched here. Crossfire trying to pull things back. Pow just uncontested. There's, I don't think there's any way yeah. for Classified to flip this now. With how uncontested this entire time, Regan had to be a lot more careful when that con was pushing him. Didn't use Flutter in time, so that grip got him stuck in. Pickles going to go down here, staggered as well. So Eastorm dominantly in control after a great Pow has been, even with his 3-3 slash lineup before yeah. that fight started, he, I think he's been the main thing keeping Eastorm in this as well as they have been. Untouched entirely throughout that mid. Just hung out up on the high ground. Stuck back, zoomed in, did some shooting. Now he's up to 4-4 four, four and, or 7-4 and 6, excuse me. Pulling away damage-wise, though, is a little bit closer. Regan w w was kind of right there with Pow at the end of the last round. Now 26k of difference for the victor as he starts to move forward damage-wise here. Good trade out there. Finding one on the counter. Stalls out this payload push a little bit, but just trying to zone. I mean, that's like a one-man victor zone under the high ground up there. Yeah, and that's just... Victor's always been so strong on this map, even on PC. The ability to just get these long sidelines. And if someone gets low and backs up, you can chase them around the corner with yeah. that grenade. It, it does a lot more damage than people give it credit for. Plus, with that Grenadier proc on that reset, it, you can chase it again. You know, do about 1,500 almost around a corner. Very tough to deal with, and Pau's showing that right now. This is why Victor was such a strong pick here. Faith Flight coming in maybe to turn things, but yeah. staying right in Pau's line of sight. He has to back up because of the inflame damage too, but that was almost very dangerous for Regan. Yeah, this is potentially the defense to win here for Classified. They do find the first kill. Forcing back in is the Whirlwind from East Storm. That's going to keep them alive just a little bit longer. Trying to win this engagement is counter. Dishonor helps him out. Now you got Inara to try to deal with. Up on the high ground is the Furia. Crossfire starting to rip through. Ian Hart, though, gets overpowered right away. Lots of damage waiting for him. Down goes the Tyra. Vivian pulls one back as well. It's a one for one trade. It's a chaotic fight happening here in the low ground. Ultimates left and right being used. East Storm overpower, Whirlwind gone. Still have a few ultimates. Re really try to force this one in. Vivian's got to be happy, honestly, that they didn't use that that Ancient Rage there, because yeah. I think that would have been really rough to not have. Now they have a chance to use it on this defense if they want to keep things at 2-2, but if they use it and then lose the cap, then that's 3-1. That's a mid-fight they don't want to be getting into without Ancient Rage. Good aggression up top, kind of bullying both DPSs, rotating yeah. upper to try to deal with the pressure from this victor. And it seems to be working for now, but what's going on in main? Looks like they're stalling out there too. The Inara winning a 1v3, yeah. basically, to buy more time for Classified. Pow, though, trading out with the Vivian, finally. And that is Vivian on the Makoa, trading out with Pow on the back end of it. Bunch of uh, intermediate trades here, one for one. Kind of as we cross the board, down goes the Dome Shield. That's going to keep Eastorm in it just for a moment. 
Sundle brings up the wall. Just hanging behind it. Potts nearly falls off. Oh, my. He was able to climb his way back up there. Would have been disastrous for Eastorm to lose there. Koga and that sort of manner. Cyclone Strike is ready should he choose to use it. Faith Flight, though, right back up. The, the Willows had so many Faith Flights throughout this game. Ian Hart, Makoa, both getting kills on the boards here, but getting traded out by Eastorm. Look out for that Faith Lighting Willow up above. That's just way too much damage. And successful looking defense here from Classified. Well, that was. He, he used the dash while he was falling off to reset his momentum. If, I don't think if he had dashed there, he wouldn't have been able to re-grab. It does reset, right. I think, your ability to grab a wall if you do that. It, it is kind of inconsistent, I feel, but luckily for Restorm, they stayed on, but unluckily for them, the Faith Flight came in to secure that defense for Classified. So good on them for that. They didn't use too many ultimates otherwise. Close to Crossfire, everything yeah. else on board for them. And I mean, Eastern committed to just a little bit more. They used the overpower, maybe missed it, because I don't recall him hitting a target. Dome Shield used for sure, got 40% back. And Barrage, in that last breath, got used as well, but did not manage to find anything. Was the overpower on to Ian Hart. Five. He grabbed the Vivian, yeah. dropped down with it. But, right. but it was, it was previous enough in the fight that he's now back up to about 50%. Yeah. Um, so we do stand at 2-2 here. Willow already on morale boost one. Unfortunate grenade there. We'll move right on from that as in flame from classified forces back from the high ground. Regan, tons of cleave damage. Whirlwind is not enough to stop the Willow. A double kill for Regan forces everyone from East Storm back. That's a clean fight. Classified now controlling this mid. Chance to zone. Spike Rover falls off. Late game, cauterize three. So tough to get through, especially if you started in a dead zone. That one second of that dead zone sticking to you once you walk out. Just too much to handle, I think, for Grover now. They actually managed to retake their banana, so they have some ground here, but they're in a firebomb, and he almost has no shield. Shell gets forced, and look at this pressure. Yeah. Shell shield to keep it up, too. They had to get forced out completely, and they're going to be walking into other sight lines, too, backing up this way. I mean, he, uh, that shield is up and down as much as it can be. Ancient Rage ripping through from Makoa here. Down goes Dishonor, down goes Pow. Brockus is able to trade one back on Regan. 87% though on this mid East Storm. Not much to really try to take this one back with. Looks like it's gonna be the Barrack counter. He's uh, holding things down here in the mid. Overtime begins. Vivian though finds the kill onto the Barrack. Sliding through is Koga. Another Faith Flight here for Regan. Might just seal this one up. Barrage is going to look to find some damage. Brockus, good battle shout, keeps him alive. Now X-Pow's in a bad spot. One more shot on Regan. They haven't cleaned up the Willow. Dishonor finds the axe to do it. Ian Hart, though, still alive. Eastorm clawing their way back into this one, but the kills too much, too often for Classified. Oh, Classified was playing so risky, too. They oh, Eastorm only had 12% on the point. But Ian Hart still peaked at 600 HP and managed to That's not cool. get hit. They wanted to do something out of that inflame, but I think Ian Hart rushed it a little bit. I mean, luckily for them, they didn't realize how low Ian was. If they yeah. knew, they would have been two picks, and I think Eastrom could have taken that. But look at this aggression from Regan right now going okay. so far in. Doesn't manage to find the kill, so things are going to sell out. But this isn't normally a place where teams even contest the point. So. Right. Guys, it's kind of a nothing, nothing gained, nothing lost situation for Classified. This is this is where the payload really slowed down on Classified's first attempt to force things through. What a chaotic game it's been. Whether it's sure. the, the mid or, or the last couple of defenses for either side, I mean, it's uh, they're just kind of throwing bodies into the middle, hoping that they come out on top of this one. Classified with a good few picks here is going to buy them this first choke point at least. Now Eastorm have to rely on some of that victor range try to poke out some damage and keep this one from rolling it. They have good positioning too. In hard on the low ground. Able to firebomb up top if necessary. Regan also able to get good corner pressure. That's the most important thing up here, especially since on the offense they can hide a lot more effectively from the victor. Regan's peeking a little good bit hooked. too much. Flutter to get some more ammo, but rough use of cooldowns, barely surviving there. Pots pressures and gets Vivian, so Eastrom have a chance to retake this ground. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna do just that. A double kill from the Koga might just seal up the first part of this defense. Might make it three in this fight with a couple more shots and does just that no more. Regan here, that's a nice three kills from Potts to put Eastorm in a good spot. Push them one step closer to tying up this game. One minute remaining, Eastorm everything but the Barrage. Classified everything but the Ancient Rage, but that one will be up nice and soon. Seems like just a series of picks is all that's gonna allow Classify back into this one. Faith Flight gets used first off, no Koga in this fight, so they're at an advantage here. Regan rounds that corner. A bit too much damage, forced back. Brockus now back on the opposite side. 
I just love these Fae Flights. I I've never seen Fae Flights used quite like this. Ice Crash actually doesn't look like it, it connects with anything. Maybe up top, great hook oh, on the no. Brock. It should get him killed. Shout barely keeps him alive. And his shield, but Wrecker's online now. Not much time there left. You go. All the kills going towards Classified right now. They have ultimates to stall. They have Dome Shield. They have Cyclone Strike. But Koga's going to go down before he even gets a chance to use it. That Barrack Shield is going to be ever so important here. He's going to have to dance in and out of it. Down goes the Dome Shield as well. The respawns for E-Storm. Zero seconds back on those. Classified cannot lose any members right now because the respawns are way too close for E-Storm here. Brockus drops off soon. Zundel, no more Inara, no more Makoa. And classified forced back, with no front line to try to contest. Gutsy defense there from E-Storm. Couldn't have come a moment too soon. They used the Dome Shield, used the Whirlwind. They still got some good stuff left for this next mid. Honestly, it was an unfortunate wall, I think, from the Inara. Could have maybe left things a little bit more open mm -hmm. For, for his team to keep putting on fire as opposed to just kind of using it just to hide and blocking off the sight lines from the defenders. It made the dome shield better than it needed to be. Sure. And I think that that really kind of messed them up when they were trying to go for this refight. This is Pots getting all those all those cleanup kills during that uh after that initial pick they got there. Solid play by them. Pow still topping the damage charts, followed yeah. closely by the Willow and the Tyra coming from classified. So I want to see how they they used a lot of ultimates there. This actually might they be did. really tough for classified yeah. into barrage, overpower, and cyclone strike. Yeah, lots lots to look at. I mean, you'll be happy if you're East Storm. Not only do you save the game, you get yourself another point only using the dome shield and whirlwind just a little bit prior. Of course, four morale boosts for classified here. They're they're just looking to weather this storm, charge those ultimates up just a little bit extra. They realize they're probably at a disadvantage here, and flame gets used first off here. That's a nice dash. With a potential stun there. Now oh, Eastorm trying to pinch in on Classified. Cyclone strike by some damage. No Ancient Rage to keep Vivian alive here. Two kills for Eastorm. Drops off the members of Classified. Now fighting from the high ground. Down goes the Inara. Eastorm so in control of this mid. Still an overpower. Still a barrage. They changed it up. I think yeah. Regan delaying on that first mid was really good. They didn't have Regan there. They had him moving in with the initial push. And it, it just opened things up for Pots to walk in from behind for free. That Cyclone Strike got way more than you'd hope a Cyclone Strike to be able to right. get on uh, with, against a coordinated team. And now they're going in. Barrage is being used. They might have Fae Flight soon, but Regan has to rush. He's just getting it now, and he's on the ground. So it's going to not get health. as I mean, much as he's going to need to. He's got no health. He, he can't really get aggressive here. Finally, starting to move forward. Pots, though, drops off on the backside. Doing some great healing here is the Grover, his pal. Trades out one kill as well for him. Down on the low ground goes both teams. So many low health bars for Classified. Brockus looking to find an advantage here. Up goes the shield. He has no ammo. He does finally use the overpower. Not able to get it off. But Pow, he's able to capitalize on some of what his team was able to put forth. An E-Storm touched the point last. An E-Storm find themselves the win. Pow uncontested basically the entire game. I mean, they, they needed something to deal with him. They never got it. They never had someone maybe hold back, ready to dive on him. Double back on Willow Tyra. Yeah. Good for fighting the point, but... I mean, if one victor does your job better, I mean, towards the end, it's, it's like if you weren't if we weren't following on board with Victor, he was like rarely on the screen. He was yeah. so back and safe the entire yeah. time, and, and that's just a that's a credit to him. You know, positioning well, the rest of East Storm buying enough space for Pow to uh, really take over that game. There, there were some moments you noted some interesting faith lights. Regan was playing wildly aggressive that game. Uh, you know, some of it for better, some of it for worse. Top damage in the game, though. It's 162k for the victor. It didn't even take a lot of damage. It only took, what is that, like 74 more damage than his Grover? Yeah. So that's I mean, that's showing how little he was dealt with. You know, when you deal triple the amount of, more than triple the amount of damage you take, right. I think that's a that's, that's, a, pretty, that's a pretty good game. I'll take that. I mean, the next closest for, for the other DPSs was like double. And at 18, 8, and 16, that's what you hope for out of your back line. Brock has had a pretty good game on the con as well. What do you think of the uh, the Koga in this one? I thought it did all right. Yeah. I, I don't think it was a phenomenal force, but it drew a lot of attention. I mean, Classified had to deal with it at the start, right? So right. weren't exactly ready to deal with it. I also still love how close he is to the camera on these shots. Oh, right. The, the heavy, everyone's like nice and back, like senior portraits, and then Potts is like as close to the camera. Or Koga, not necessarily Potts, is so close to the camera as you could in this case. Pow, though, you said his name a lot. Certainly good map for Victor, and he made good use of that advantage. Oh, for sure. It's it's definitely one of his home grounds, I would say. It, you could see, this was the, the first mid where we called out how uncontested he was, and you can see here, I mean, he has to move in a little bit, get inside to do, to get away from the Fae flight, but 
just all of his abilities. I think his ultimates were, were finding a ton of value. You can see right there, he's getting dove by the Fae Flight, sprinting away. And yeah. Uncontested in so many of these fights, they had no way to get onto him at all. The Makoa, not even looking at him, running away, yeah. staring. He did save Regan, but Pau is doing everything. Yeah, that that's just... It's hard to win a game when you're not able to to dive on the victor. There were a couple moments where, where yeah. like, right at the beginning, that Fae Flight and Flame combined mm -hmm. one notable fight, like, around the banana, and East Storm just got obliterated. You couldn't do that on a consistent enough basis, and that means East Storm has the first win in our fourth and final set of the day. Game two, right after this. The Paladins Console League is brought to you by Evil Mojo Games. Developers of Power. Welcome back, guys, to the PCL, the Paladins Console League. East Storm already has one game under their belt in the form of Stone Keep. Now we're looking at game two potentially, and I'm interested to see what they're going to bring out because I was not expecting East Storm to be able to do what they did on that. Yeah, I, I honestly think that that's the best thing to say for this is right, that East yeah. Storm. Out of all of these, I think you take this, and I mean, this set will probably give us a really good feeder for it as to how it's going to be. But I mean, you give them 60% of the wins, maybe. Yeah. But like, for the most part, East Storm is not necessarily the team to take down classified. Right. It's always been the other way around. And so seeing them make the appropriate changes coming into today to be able to do so has been incredible from them. But seeing if they can keep it up is really where my mind is going to be at. You right, get exactly. one, don't get cocky with it, keep right. kind of rolling forward and finding yourself one after another. Yeah, you definitely have to be able to hold your positioning, hold your ground and your momentum in this case, but we're going to see where they go for game two in terms of map picks to see what they're picking in response. And Bride Marsh, a good map, actually, to believe, in my personal opinion, to segment off of this, to keep your momentum because oh, yeah. of how often it is you're fighting. If you're riding a little bit of that victory that you had last map on Stone Keep, Bright Marsh, I feel like, would be the perfect place to do that. And you're going to need to do it maybe a little faster overall. The thing about the, the way Stone Keep went, I mean, specifically right. being a 4-3, but going as close as it did each round, mm -hmm. you need something in my mind that maybe solidifies a little more. Right. Like, and Bright Marsh is one of those maps that Theoretically, you should be able to force zero on if you know it well enough. And so this, I think, will be more telling for both of these teams as to was that last map just a good map for East Storm and Classified? Or is one of these teams truly just ahead of right. the other? Exactly. Vivian I'm locked in first supreme. pick. Now, once again, you mentioned before the fact that she's normally not banned. But in this case, it is console. We're looking at hit scan presences are extremely powerful. And Vivian being one of the ones I always think of whenever I'm thinking you of see hit scan banners. presence, whether Run. it be her or Tyra. The damage that she can pump out is extremely powerful. East Storm in response goes for the Leon. They go for the Con. Being able to sit back a lot more like it would be a lot harder for Vivian to be able to really capitalize on. She has 70 bullets, but she has to be able to keep LOS the whole time. Yeah, and I mean, we've seen kind of a, a match between the styles. The of the Obviously, like the one that we used to see all the time that no longer is in the game, but Sapper Rounds was really good. 150% damage to shields. Would take that away. Opportunity and Chaos. 70 rounds. Mm -hmm. Run a couple cards that maybe give you some reset on the bullets. You're dealing more damage generally. And with a Wrecker, you can burn through Con Shield. You could potentially Tied burn through a Dome Shield Bob. as well since Barrett gets locked in. And it, again, to me... Vivian is a really solid first pick for console, not just because she's solid on console, but it's kind of the, like, in my mind, go ahead, try, nice. try right, playing yeah. Torvald. Like, Some if you want to pick right. him, go for him, but we're just going to make him not work well. Right, exactly, which is interesting for you to say that because I see the con, I see the barrack in response to that because one thing it is that I always think of is I think Choose of the shield break heathen, potential. They are your last. If I was ever concerned about shield break, before I'm definitely concerned about it now with the addition of Tyra yeah. to classify its team along with the Lex they're gonna run the, they're the gonna run the triple DPS full. now that's something I can respect into the con into the bear into the Grover because they're grouped up a lot when that in flame happens man you're gonna be you're, you're gonna be a little bit more than yeah. shook just like I'm shook about this terminus pick which I'm interested triple DPS meets triple frontline yeah. who will win I mean, I mean, they have, you know, like okay. you said, with the Inflame, there are periods of time here where Classified have the double damage amp that they can right. dump down. And Tyra is notably great at burning through tanks. I honestly think maybe that Terminus pick might not have been the right call. Right. I'm not so sure either. I'm a big fan of Classified's team comp in this case. But, of course, there's only one way to find out is by taking us into the game, casters. Let's do it. There it is. It's Little there. gaming right beneath the Thunder Strikes. 
I guess the lightning strikes for East Storm. Game two about to get underway as they so correctly pointed out on the desk. Little triple front line versus triple DPS. Interesting in the two compositions though. The, the Terminus rounding out the triple front line and then a Lex rounding out the triple DPS. Hard to make heads or tails of this one. I'm, you know, traditionally this, this goes the way uh, of triple front line, but I'm kind of feeling what Classified is bringing to the table here. It reminds me of old Fnatic sure. in, in a weird way, because Fnatic, they were one of the only teams to run triple DPS on this map. And triple backline, yes, Lex is a flank, but he's really a backline. Right. Like he's just a, a heavy rotation right. backline, I think, more than anything. Bringing that to the table, I think it could be good if they can keep the distance. Obviously, this triple tank, at least with what they drafted, they want a death ball. I think they want to move right. together, play on their Grover, and find picks. But they're just going to get surrounded and kited like this. Qu immediate kill for them, too. Two quick ones, four classified. It's going to work if they can find a surround like this. Yeah, talk about your flank. That's exactly what you look for here. Now Terminus has way too many places to try and focus. One more shot from Regan will do it. Classified on the point that whole time. E-Storm without a leg to stand on, without a kill to stand on here. Participating in all five of those kills, thanks to Hunting Party, is the Tyra, of course, on the opposite side. Well played to Classified as soon as you could have captured that mid. They did just that. And Vivian on the Tyra. We're going to have to really think oh, hard no. on this one. So it's Vivian on the Tyra while no. his teammate is also playing. Uh, right, while Ian Hart is also playing are we Vivian. Doing champion names or are we doing character names? We have to decide now. I think for everyone, it's 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 player name, and then you just say Tyra instead of Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, M H Tyra, his alt account coming. Well, out. Unless we're saying M H Tyra, I think in that case it's, it's okay. Okay, well, we'll have to specifically. Or say Or M H Vivian time. rather. Oh, M H Tyra is what you're saying. Yeah, right. We'll call him M H Tyra. Perfect. And M H Tyra does get a kill with the crossfire onto counter. Maybe a little bit overzealous on the side, and this Anar is kind of running it down mid right now onto this terminus, stuck out while he's taunting all a mile away. Getting forced out, even with the death on Regan. The cap pressure from Zonda might just be too much for them to deal with right now. They're cutting back just a little bit. Pow, of course, in the last one, relatively uncontested the entire game on the victor. He'll hope that he has about as easy of a game on the Leon this time around. Up to the left is the Lex starting to roll through here for Regan. Finds the first kill on to Dishonor, so that's the healing. Now gone for East Storm is classified with to continue their momentum forward. That's a nice kill from MH Tyra in this case. Regan starting to run down mid as the actual Vivian finds another kill. East Storm, I'm not sure they've gotten anything this game. Ooh, that jump from Dishonor is a little unfortunate. Gets him right into the sight line. Three kills. So that the kiting that the pressure Four that East Storm had in mid, they just walked straight into a completely surrounded team, and you can't do that with Terminus, especially with Khan. I mean, yeah. Khan and Terminus, two great tanks that will only block damage in, in, in one direction, can't turn it that fast. And both have trouble from up top, and Brockus going on the right, getting surrounded, Seismic Crash coming in to get some stuns, and, and kills oh follow it up immediately. Oh, I'm so scared. If I'm East Storm right now, I'm, I'm terrified. I see the, the wings pop out, the crossfire rolls through, Seismic Crash drops down. They got nothing to stand on here, East Storm as the fastest 2-0 of the day for sure. Especially if you consider the, the 40 seconds pregame time. That's about a three-minute round. Got a couple kills, four to be exact, but uh, that's a 6-0-7 for MH Vivian on the Tyra. 6-2-7 for Regan. 3-1-7 for Ian Hart. Triple uh, DPS doing its job. Yeah, for sure. I, East Drum are playing into it so hard, though. I, I feel like they're kind of just walking into the situations that make Triple DPS good. Yeah. When they're around you and you can't get on any of them, and they don't have anyone to really make that distance. I mean, even when you go Triple Tank, they don't have the Ash to make that room. They don't have a flanker as their DPS. So they're kind of stagnant in their positioning, right. and it's it's rough. It's going to be rough. As long as Classified keep positioning well, I mean, look at all those streaks running down on their side. It's going to be yeah. so hard for them to make any room. They got a, a couple wreckers as well to get things going. Starting to round out those tier two items as sparse pauses reign supreme here on Bright Marsh. No, I'll pause. No, you pause. No, I'll no, no. <laughs> Let me pause. No, I'll pause. Everyone, uh, everyone taking their chance to pause. <laughs> I noticed uh, already just briefly two or three havens starting to roll out for uh, for East Storm here. I guess it makes sense when you got triple DPS firing. At it's you. only I mean it's other than the Tyra firebomb and the. 
Sentinels yeah. from Leon. I was trying to think of, yeah, other than those things, it's all direct. So smart by them to get that, especially since they're going to want to buy time. You know, they, that's all they can really do. And Dome Shield early to force them back. But again, they could just set up a surround if they want to. Terminus coming from the pit. Don't see that very much. But now he's completely alone on an island, and he goes down. Oh, well, there's an overpower for E-Storm. So they're at least going to get one in this fight, which is something we were only able to say a couple of times in the last round. Vivian. Gets a nice bit of damage there onto counter. A nice double kill for the Tyra. Pow is still alive, saving Grace for E-Storm in the last one. Not going to be the same here in this mid. Classified for a little bit of chaos back and forth. A good overpower kill gets rid of their Inara. They've now retaken this high ground. Now E-Storm have to fight back in this triple DBS. Weird positioning, I think, by Eastorm later in that fight. I mean, he, Potts didn't need to walk back onto the point, but he did. Now look at this surrounded Terminus. He'll have his yeah. he'll have his Resurrect, but does oh actually does find some damage onto yeah, Vivian. Well. Not sure if they'll get the kill. It is, but not for the trade of all that damage that was going in. Potts goes down. Terminus tries to get onto the point, but can't stun a CC immune target. Uh, Counter was able to actually stay alive there. Finally, falls off. So low was the Lex. He was able to slide his way up there, stay alive. Gonna be able to siphon a little bit, but overtime begins. He's the last one alive. Ian Hart finds the kill and classified after a close 4 3 loss. Strike three straight times here and are now one point away from sealing up map number two. And they're immediately, they're gonna get the stack kill right away. Pots completely alone. You have to be able to peel for each other in triple tank. I think that's a big part of it, using all those defensive cooldowns oh, nice. to stay alive. And they're definitely not staying alive. For sure. What would you, what would you call that, that sound, the kill sound, like the ding? Like a like a bell ringing in a yeah. boxing match or, or something? Because that's all E-Storm has been able to hear, all Classified has been able to hear throughout this entire game. It's been a, about a one-sided uh, of an affair as you could hope for, if you're Classified, of course. They do have four ultimates ready to go. Everything but the crossfire. E-Storm about halfway on three, ready to go on two of them. So they could really start to push this. Seismic Crash does lock up one, maybe a couple on the opposite side. Th there were some stunts on the back end of that camera shot there. One, two, three, Brockus. Once that siphon drops, so will he. E-Storm yet again deleted off this map. Shooting bodies, rolling through here, just inches away from getting this payload in and sealing up the 4-0. I mean, they ignored the Terminus, but he stood in a firebomb the whole time. So he got yep. absolutely obliterated going down really quick. And look at this positioning by them. They have one DPS in mid, left, right. The perfect surround. This Terminus will not be able to live very long. Tries to Shatterfall in, does get yeah. the stun, but both of them oh, go no. down and it immediately rolls in. Uh oh, oof. <laughs> oof is all, that is, you, I <laughs> Thank mean, you, that, Dave. there was nothing, that is <laughs> high tier analysis for, for E-Storm. Big old oof that time around. I, I think there's merits to fighting a, a triple front line into triple DP. I mean, it works out a good bit of the time, but yeah. just did not there. I mean, the 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 interesting variety, you throw Lex into the mix for triple mm -hmm. DPS, and that adds an extra little bit of variety, but then your third tank is a Terminus. I mean, the, the, lots to be desired there, I think, if you're restored. They could have played around each other a little bit better. Yeah. You know, like, if, if they had the Terminus, yes, and if they had been able to siphon on top of each other, yeah. maybe it could have worked if they had played just a little bit tighter, but they were always so split, oh, I no. felt. Never managed to cross that gap. Counter accomplishing his goal of getting precisely 30,000 damage. Good for him for that. The turrets did not betray him this time, and you can see how sided the damage is towards classified. I'm trying to do, like, super quick math. So only POW and Counter were above anyone on classified. Yeah. So you had the top five damages in the game save Counter and POW, including Mr. Pickles on the healer. So, so tough game there. I mean, 3 7 0, zero 8 for the Terminus. I feel like that's what I've seen out of Terminus. And this isn't just so much a question of, of Brockus, but, but like. The character in general? Yeah, just the character. I'm not. I think in the right situation, Terminus can mm -hmm. work. But this just wasn't quite it. Three, one, one death for three members of Classified. And then the, those that had more than one had 12 kills. That's just a, a, a one sided game through and through. Here's the thing for me. Combine the build plus the, the talent, right? Crush into triple DPS and an Inara with CC immunity. Yeah. Not 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 what I would pick, definitely sure. for sure. So I, I could see why I would struggle. Plus the build's about holding your charges, and you can't do that against squishy targets, especially targets like that Tyra are gonna be constantly marking you and laying in the damage. Vivian, I think, did a great job on the Tyra. <laughs> It's so important, I think, for the triple DPS, bringing that double stacking damage boost yeah. to make give them even more lethality than they had before. Well, yeah, I mean, this scene is what we saw so often in this game. We're like, crossfire, 
would get loaded up and then immediately those flame wings sprout out. I mean, yeah. just, just the way they stack their ultimates so strong and it just left E-Storm with, with nothing to stand on. Triple kill, hard to fight against that. Good firebombs even. You don't often <laughs> see like firebomb kills or, or a huge amount of firebomb damage, but just the way E-Storm were playing, they kind of had to stay in certain areas and gave so much value. It really denied the, the clumping that I was mm -hmm. saying they should be doing. Yeah. Maybe group up on a, after the firebomb, then use the Grover amp to speed yourself, the Grover boost sure. to speed yourself out with that gentle breeze, which he was running at four. So 20% speed to get himself out of there, but just weren't able to do it in time. Gotta, so tough. Gotta ignore that one. If you're E-Storm, let's, let's move on yeah. past game two. You won game one in 4-3 four, in four, fashion, so, so things were at least somewhat yeah. just, close. Just pretend you got DQ'd. Right, just be yeah, like, no, oh man, I wish we didn't leave, but I guess it's time for game three now. Yeah, darn. DQ'd game two, and, and we'll leave it at that. Got a 1-1 one, one series here. Tiebreaker right after this break. Skillshot, the official production partner of the Paladins Console League. Welcome back to the PCL, guys. Amazing game two right there. Really, really impressed with Classify's adapt. Well, with their adaptation, but not only that, but I was really impressed with just how much damage I was seeing up on that screen all at one time, Gore, because yeah. of the fact that they had the double damage. Well, not the double damage up. They just had damage up. They had the hit scan they needed, and the Furia, and the hunting party. So. Literally, what else can you say? I'll be completely honest. Coming into today, mm -hmm. that's more of what I expect out of this right. set. Classified have always been this team, you know, sponsored or not, but they've always been this team that, that has kind of been the, well, the second to what is now Hype Unit, what used to be Elevate, because they were and are stellar and right. admittedly above E-Storm as well as pretty much any opponents that we've given them. DC Eternity kind of going to have to check how they do as time goes on. But they were always solidly second, which is an unfortunate scenario to be in, but it's really good, I want to say, in comparison to what we see in some other regions, which it's, it's a flop from two through four. So I expect them to kind of keep control here. Right. I mean, with a performance like that, it's very hard to argue to see if Classify really yeah. has the stuff it is that they need to be able to close this out. We're going to take a look at the next map for a game three, see if they have cooking for us right here. Bizarre, a nice. map that is very bizarre because we normally don't see it. It's just been so long today that we have. Like, yeah, right. I feel like it's more so Weird. in, you know, like in the PPL, we do two best of sevens and they can be obnoxiously long days. Yeah. But you get a wide variety of maps. When you when you do these days, you have the same maybe amount of hours for, for four sets to come through as you might get in two sets of the PPL. But you don't get the same map variety since right. you end it in three so you may be you know in a three zero there's seven maps total four that get banned and then three that you play through so this is one of those moments where i'm excited to see bizarre so am i i mean we already see the bands already are up on the board tyra geno's gone atlas talus both of them also Blades gone victor is locked in on the side of east arm however the fact that tyra is going mean there's no damage yet but that doesn't mean that he can't opt to try and go for the vivian or the furia again but yep. i feel like it sort of loses luster if you're not trying to really go for the double damage yet i mean fury is a good healer but i feel like at the same time you, you're giving up a lot by trying yeah. to just make sure you can boost vivian's damage when it's already crazy i mean i'm gonna say this again just just because like i mean Next week, so Wednesday, mm. you know, update comes through. Terminus is getting nerfed then. He's not right. nerfed right now. You can still play Terminus. It's yeah. still loud. He still does a lot of damage amp. But the, the big issue with him 
and, and Torvald. I don't know if I said Terminus or Torvald. Before. You said Terminus. I, I definitely I said the Torvald. wrong name. Torvald. Torvald is what Getting you meant. nerfed yeah. Wednesday. Still going to be good right now if you want to play him. Still has the damage amp in his kit. Yeah. But you lose the aggression on the side. That's really the biggest issue. You 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 take you know Khan here instead of him. You take Ash here instead of him. You don't really get him as a point tank. He doesn't do that job really well. He doesn't really do the off tank thing. He's a support through and through when it yeah. comes down to it. It's just very difficult to take him down. But the bubble is very very potent with the right combination. I mean, it's really hard to argue with that. I mean, you, we've seen the damage it can do in the PPL or PML where you have the Torvald Leon pocket where they're just bursting you for damage, especially on a character like Leon that can just continuously poke you with constant damage coming out from Torvald as well. I mean, like the amp amplification is like unknown in this case. We see the Ying be locked in as well as the Koga, which I mean, of course, is interesting. I mean, it's always good to see Koga. Don't see him hmm. as often. Uh, on um, on console, even though he has a head scan presence, but I feel like his damage might be a little bit too spread out. So it's a lot harder to see him as opposed to some of the others. And he definitely disappeared for a little while as well. Like, I mean, he was very prominent on original release for console and then kind of took a right. seat on the sideline for a while. Now he's coming back in. This to me screams maybe that they have more practice on Bazaar, specifically using Koga, because this map doesn't scream Koga to me. So I'm, I'm actually really excited to see what East Storm do with this. Yeah, I mean, whether East Storm can continue their hot streak here, or at least try to keep up the momentum with Classify, we'll have to find out in game three. Well, you got game three, and, and we're going down to Bazaar, and neither team, too, too weird of picks on the opposite side. We're, we're back to some level of normalcy. Uh, you know, no Terminus this time. Although, you did point out Terminus has a 66% win rate today. As harsh as I've been on Terminus, and as sure as I was, he had a losing record today. He, he does not technically have a losing record today. I, I think he won one of his games. I think he was on the winning team in a second. <laughs> sure, there you go. Uh, from, from we'll throw an I asterisk on that one. Yeah, we can. At any rate, though, not in this one. Vivian Strix for Classified. Interesting. It's a good little duo there. And then uh, Koga Victor on the opposite for East Storm. Uh, Strix is, is always an interesting one to follow here. Yeah, I think so. He's really kind of risen recently to, to prominence on some of these maps. Just the ability to do burst damage over that range and not be super easy to dive, especially if you have you know, the team sure. able to protect him. But with the Ash on the other side, it's going to make it a little bit harder. You know, He already he saw the Ash and he's already stealthing and rotating out because he knows it's going to be a threat. I'm worried about the Koga on this map, honestly. Yeah. I think he's going to have a really rough time getting in, I feel. Well, so much of, of what Strix has been able to do recently has been dependent on that, where you hit a quick scope, flip to your pistol, finish off the damage. So that's, that's what you look for Regan to be able to do here is the, the quick op and swap, as we like to put it. Counter getting plugged out a little bit. E-Storm on the point first here is classified. Look at a retake. 100 health gets a little bit of shielding. Thanks to the, uh, the bowling ball there. The rocket boot shielding. Classified looking to retake the point. Force back East Storm just a little bit. Only one kill so far. Maybe another, but it's been uh, very casual to begin. Just kind of a poke fest back and forth. Regan looking for one more shot onto the Ying. Finds it. Dishonor goes down. Brockus does as well. Nice double kill for both Strix and Vivian. Classified, find themselves on the board first. They, they just ignored the Strix. Once they let him get onto the opposite side, it was basically over. Even if the Vivian had not taken all that ground, it was still, you know, I think it was just it was just over. He was yeah. doing to put so much damage on, they had nobody to cross that distance to get to him. The Koga is a flanker, but kind of needs to be there already, if you know what I mean. He needs to, he can't make it behind you without you noticing most of the time. No verticality right. or anything like that. He can climb, but... You'll hear it all the time. Mirage coming in by Pow to get rid of the Strix, so big amount of damage taken off the board, but it's immediately traded onto Brockus. And this is where you hope you'd be able to hold if you're on defense because you sort of know where they're coming from. Missed overpower from MH Vivian now on the con. Five streak, only streak in this game. I saw a head shake over there. No, no, I'm just, he, he swapped from tank to, to, to DPS back to tank. Just an interesting, interesting swapping back and forth by the team. I guess maybe he's just more comfortable on this, and that's fine. Inflame coming in to start things out for Classified to go in very quickly. Vivian getting very low, doesn't notice the Barrack in the con behind him, brings him down, and the Victor barely managed to get away for Eastor. Uh, doesn't get away. Our counter or Dishonor. Double kill from the Strix back in this fight. Ian Hart looking to find a kill here. 
Koga flanking around the back side, slides through one last time. The respawns, though, are going to be closer for E-Storm than for Classified. Just hanging out behind the shield is Ash back there, and that, that buys enough time for, for E-Storm to respawn through. Force back Classified here. First round of ultimates, maybe second round of ultimates ready for E-Storm. Seismic Crash dropping down from Zundel here. Not going to find any kills. Actually, only dies off for it. E-Storm with a couple. Fourth back classified, a good assert dominance. Could really seal this one up. Doesn't seem like he needs to use it. And classified goes searching one more time. Sasma Crash used in the open. I mean, everybody at this point playing this map, you should have an idea of that balcony. It's so crucial for the defending team. So easy to flank. I know one of the best characters to see if there is Bomb King able to get some corner pressure. But Victor up there too. I mean, we've already seen some problems with ignoring Victor in this set. Can't do it again, especially when you're spending resources on that push. So now no seismic crash up for them, overpower, not even, just over halfway there. Eastrum used a couple ultimates to counter, but Cyclone Strike and Illusory Rifter are pretty quickly to yep. pretty quickly charging ultimates, so not too bad. Five seconds left, they're gonna need to throw a tank away if they wanna get overtime here. Looks like they're gonna do that. Down goes the Dome Shield for Eastrum as well. They're gonna look to seal this one up. They find a kill onto Ian Hart, pow, as well. So that's one less frontliner here. It's all gonna be down to MH Vivian on the con, and it's not gonna last very long as Pal finds himself a nice double kill on the victor to seal up the defense, and we're tied at one. And it's crazy that they would spend the dome shield there, I feel. I think this is almost gonna guarantee the mid fighter classified if they play it properly. Just the resources spent when you know they're throwing themselves at the cart. Interesting decision by them. I guess they just wanted to yeah. make absolutely sure that it went to 1-1. They don't wanna give classified the chance to win the game right then and there. Sure. And I, I kind of get that. Khan does get a lot worse in late game. His shield being much, much weaker as the game goes on. Right. They have Ying. They have Barrack. They have characters that also fall off a little bit. So interesting choice. Trying to kind of force themselves into that lane, especially since Classified Five, have the credit advantage four, from the first mid. Three, two, uh, Pow again one. channeling his Victor energy. Nice H streak for E-Storm here. Double kill sealed up the last defense for them. Caught twos for three of the members of Classified. One for Ian Harp, but he has the record two on his side. A little bit more sparse in the middle. I think he was looking for a shot onto Regan, but he was able to pull himself through there. Pow drops off first. Ian Hart up onto the high ground. Down comes the her dominance. That's going to save Ash's life just for a little bit longer. Brockus finds a kill on the back end of it as well. Regan, if he's going to pull this one back, needs to find one slice shot. A couple low health targets. The Ash is healthy enough that that one He's able to just be shrugged off a little bit, so early ultimates getting used. Classified still have some good ones as well. Oh, Lucery Rift Freestorm gets popped. The overpower not connecting yet again for the con. So that one goes back to cooldown with Classified in the upper 60s. I think that's part of the downside of swapping from DPS to tanking back. I mean, you're not used to that, the play you have to do hitting those ultimates. Brockus barely gets away, but all the kills go into Regan. They keep ignoring him. Both of these teams just are not ready to deal with these backline DPSs. And Potts isn't using Cyclone Strike, but we all know what happens when you use a Cyclone no. Strike in front of anybody. He goes down immediately when it's over. That buff is not quite in the game yet for you, so. One kill there. He's, uh, classified have pretty solid position here. Ash might try to dash in. Barrett makes it, but no Dome Shield. He's gonna burn down immediately. Yeah, right, counter dropped off the moment he arrived. Brockus gets a kill up onto the high ground. Overtime is being contested here, but look how fast that meter wants to move. The moment Ash gets cleaned up here, it's gonna evaporate. There it goes, down and through. Classified, strike back. Some good mid fighting there. Dome Shield just back to 75%. You wonder how costly of a mistake, maybe not a mistake, choice is the proper word, how costly of a choice that was to use it at the end of the last round. And the Classified now up another 300 credits too. I mean, yep. that, that's a big thing. If you're winning mid fights, you do have a large advantage going into the later rounds. If you win every mid fight, but never cap, you have a 900 credit advantage to right. the other team. That's massive. I mean, that's a level three item. And that can really make or break a lot of situations. Classified, though, getting zoned out after the mid fight, trying to retake a little bit of space. Fountain being used here just to give counter a better angle onto the back line. And Barrage using two. They want to slow things down a little bit more. Classified have to back off unless they want to give Pow even more damage for his stats. Yeah, not a great start to this offensive push for Classified. It's a lot of ground to make up here. East Storm on defense, forcing back Classified back into their base. Good shield keeps counter allied. Alive, excuse me, just for a moment. Illusory Riffery Storm is going to try to buy some time. Classified want to retake this mid area here on the back of the end flame. Finally, an overpower connecting as well. It's a 
good fight using some ultimates. Only flashbang still remaining for classified. E Storm now have the dome shield. We gotta consider when we use it now. Assert dominance. Cyclone Strike will be ready soon as well. Vivian a little bit caught out. There's your assert dominance. Locks up two. Only one ends up getting killed off as MH Vivian's able to back off around that corner. Uh, no kills just yet, but some good stuns from the Usurp Dominance by some time. Pot's finally cleaning up the con on the opposite side. I think the use of the ultimate as early as it was for Classified was pretty good. There's enough time they could recharge an ultimate, but losing the fight and getting staggered now is going to make it a lot worse. Regan finds counter. That's pretty big. The tank on the low ground not able to stop the pressure from there, so Regan can now kind of play anywhere as long as he can find the victor. and is. Found him. Where's there Waldo? Easiest, easiest book he's ever read. Well, he knows where he is now, and he's respawning in five seconds from the back of East Storm's base. Some good shots. Regan is kind of melded into the, uh, the fog a little bit in a few of these fights, but really starting to hit some important shots as they round this next corner. Get caught a little bit out. Yeah, that's, that's a high balcony you got to be careful of. Pow is just free and clear to hang out up there all day. We will go into overtime. This payload will not make it down before that begins. One last chance at defense here for East Storm. Pal has the barrage ready to go if he wants to use it. Knows that Regan is down there. One more burst seals him up. Regan peaked. Thought Pal might be looking elsewhere, but he was not. Now it's a 4v5 disadvantage for Classified. Too many low health bars. The number is not in their favor. That low ground, the wall just buying time for Anara down there on the low ground. But the moment it drops, Sundal does the same. And that's a successful defense here for East Storm. Uh, you, you said when Regan poked, just like hoped he was looking somewhere else. I don't know if there's anywhere else yeah, for right. I mean, look maybe, when he's on that balcony. Maybe aiming at a front line yeah. or something, but <laughs> he, was wait he was ready and waiting. I, Pow is really so hard for them to deal with on this balcony. They just they just cannot bring themselves to stop peeking him. They can't bring themselves to just play those corners a little bit tighter. Maybe hug, like, there wasn't, there's an angle that Regan can play inside that hallway where he can hide from Pow. Maybe not the grenades, but he can hide from the, the assault rifle fire from Pow. And, and get pressure onto the spawn doors, onto the right. Ying who was peeking. There was a Ying chipping at him, and he kept looking at Pal by the spawn. He definitely sure. could have changed his priority up a little bit, but they have most of their ultimates coming in here. I'm not sure if they still have the Sentinels on the Vivian. They, it seems to have been spent. I'm not sure if they managed to maintain that. Uh, they do, so that's good for them. So basically, five ultimates up. Eastern have a lot too, but assert dominance. If they can find the Ash early, they can not give her the chance yep. to charge that up. Also, that's the overpower that could counter that out. So Keep your eyes on that interaction. Not gonna get the time to use the dome shield. This counter here is the inflame and the Vivian damage way too much once those Sentinels are out. Brachus, assert dominance may be used elsewhere or just not up in time. I, I didn't catch the cooldown at the beginning of this round. At any rate though, classified, they use two. Seismic Crash and Flame. Now they're very in control, but East Storm, okay, so the assert dominance was not ready just yet. Mm -hmm. But now East Storm with Essentially five ultimates with a chance to retake. And he's a loser to start. Overpower comes in and does connect onto Pow, it looks like. Oh, sorry, no, that's the Koga, excuse me. Somebody Pow finding him. two of them in the back, though. No one's there to shoot. They yeah, weren't somebody. ready for that overpower. So now they're just going to get everybody. Oh, no, no one was ready for that. He just got Koga was like, guys, guys, <laughs> please. And it, it fell apart. They, they might have turned to look at him. And again, Pow, uncontested, free firing, finds two. And then a third as the fight goes on. Yeah, East Storm now very in control, still assert dominance. Could seal this one up as classified for the first time this game. Forced to try to fight back in. That's two caps, two defends for uh, classified and East Storm on the opposite side. Down comes the assert dominance. A couple more shots on Ian Hart will do it. So much focus being put on this Ash in the back side. Zundel drops off. Classified lose their first mid of the game. And East Storm, they can end it despite being on the back foot. This entire game could push and end it. Depending on how hard they stagger here and how well they play around the window. You know, if the Vivian or Strix get up there, could be hard for them to deal with if they can play around it. Hopefully they've learned from, from Pow free firing before, but we'll have to see. They do have the Cyclone Strike if they want to do something. Not the best ultimate on its own, but very good to buy time. Yeah. If they want to make a play with an Ash Dive, then I think it's a great thing to combo with it. Koga has the ability to climb over that gate on the right side too, so he can do that. Get into the backline, Cyclone Strike and distract for his team to make a move, but Regan does not want them to have any execution. First pick goes to them, and, and Classified are absolutely pedaled to the metal. Right? Everything is going to snowball from there. Pow may be able to trade one out here, but not going to happen when everyone rounds that corner. Good chance to defend here for Classified. They have East Storm pushed all the way back. At least at the moment, barring any big throw from Classified, it looks like a .7 mid. 
if they're able just to effectively trade out here on this uh, central defense. Look towards the ultimates as well. Sentinels used but charging. So while they're out, they will uh, continue to charge up here. Overpower will be ready with a minute left, you know, then it depends when you use it here down towards the back end of this because the last mid, or this next mid, likely will be the last mid, but might not get there if E-Storm continue to trade the way they are here. Classified are forced back. They have Inflame and Overpower and Flashbang to be used right now at this moment if they need it. Seismic Crash will be ready soon. Now, now's that middle ground where, where both teams, the E-Storm could end it by using some ultimates here. Classified need to use some ultimates to defend, and that's what they're going to do. They pop the Inflame. That's all they use just right now, and Regan finds a shot onto Pots. Back to base he goes. Flame might have just bought them this defense trade out with the Illusory Rift. They need to keep the fight going, though. They need to extend this, get some staggers, because they want to get some alt charge for their Fury again. Inflame's so crucial to these mid-fights, I feel. They need to get it very quickly, and Regan is just rattling off these headshots, pushing up on the right side. I don't think E-Storm have a chance to retouch now. If they do, it's not going to be the best. They're going to have to, to throw someone away for it. Pots may be making a move for it. Most likely will not use a Cyclone Strike. Want to save that for a minute at this point, since they never had the chance to execute right. before. Moving in on the left, might be able to get Vivian here, but no one's able to make it to the point. Too much damage. All right, point seven we go. Take note of ultimates and everything abound there. Inflame Mage almost back. That's right, Inflame 75%. We move into this last mid. Ian Hart has had a pretty good game on the Vivian up to this point, I would say. The the buzzword of the set so far has been free fire, I think. Oh, yeah, for sure. No one's able to deal with these back lines on, on either side. No one's really making it in to get any pressure. I mean, both yeah. teams, I mean, Eastrom have a flanker, but Koga's not going to be able to cross an open space sure. and get onto a Strix. You know, sure. if he maybe if he mounts under and doesn't get spotted, that's one way to do it, but I mean, look at how classified is starting their mids. They're always keeping eyes on that, denying them any chance of getting in. And what I want to see, the Wrecker on Koga, only Wrecker one, but yep. it actually helps him charge up his Adrenaline Junkie faster. Sure. The shield damage that he can do to Vivian with that will get him dashing around more and more. So, interesting start by him. I do like the adaptation, but it's not going to yeah. mean anything with Ian Hart in the perfect position to take him down. Ian Hart drops off because of counter though. That's the overpower into the back. The last one didn't work out very well. This one doesn't either. Right into the dome shield goes the overpower. Vivian drops off on the back end. He's only hit a couple this game and the two that he's hit haven't, haven't done anything up to this point. Classified looked great at the start of that fight but some missed ultimates. A good dome shield as well and look at this. E-Storm, Cyclone Strike, Illusory Rift, Assert Dominance. They have plenty to zone with here. Classified do have some ultimates though to try to work back in. Hey guys, I'm looking for an overpower. Oh, okay. Okay. They don't seem to care about it. Inflame coming in to get them some room. Regan getting a powerful shot with Inflame boost. It's so strong. Missing the victory there though might be huge. Assert dominance in main. They have to get through him to touch the point. They're just ignoring him. That's the smart play. Koga buys some time with the dashes too, but so much pressure going on point-wise. Look at the health bars for Eastorm actually. They're so low. Classified. They're finding the picks they need. Yeah, Classified has some low health bars on the opposite side. Pow finds the kill onto Ian Hart here. Classified are fighting from the point. They have 72% to 87 over on the East Storm side. These next trades likely decide the game. They're going in favor of Classified here. You have to find just the last few. Counter not in range to get the touch, and Classified took them a while, but they got themselves the win. Yeah, that was a crazy grindy game for them. Neither team could get wow. past that, that last corner. I mean, Classified got a little bit further than East Storm did. That was they only caps and defenses, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, well, that's how to push on Bazaar. I, I, I don't blame them. It's oh, no, a tough it's push. That is hard. It is. You have a lot of free space on the defense. You get so much room you can kite way back to. Spawn doors are inside of the choke, too. Yeah. So you can hold there, go back and forth, kind of like Ice Mines, except yeah. with a much more interactive push, I feel. No, it is. You're very right. It is a very hard map to push on, especially when you have Victor, Vivian, uh, yeah. uh, Strix on your side hanging out in that little balcony area. It's tough to do. Don't see it very often. Don't see it at all in this game. It is a, another 4-3. Classified, though, strike back. Break the tie here in this set as we take a look at the post-game stats. Now on top of the damage charts, 136K for the victor. But uh, Regan and Ian Hart provide a little extra damage for their team around the backside counter, throwing his name in the mix as well. Yeah, Strix is, again, I mentioned it earlier that he's kind of just been very prominent in this meta recently, console. Now adopting him on these maps, I mean, 17 and 9, 
Great play by him. Yeah. I, I, I like the, the adaptation to use crack shot instead of unauthorized use, so you can still have the flare to watch under. It kind of right. does the same thing. I right. mean, it's about use gun, switch to other gun, <laughs> do big damage. Crack shot's a little bit slower, but you get that utility from the flare. too many steps. I, can't, you're, you're I don't wrong. follow. You're not wrong. That's too many steps. I don't follow. Pow, closing in on uh, 20 kills this time, but Regan, 17 on the opposite side. 122,000 damage, as we point out. Just the presence of a, a Strix in this point. As much as you can, we can mention, you know, they forget about the victor on the opposite mm -hmm. side. There are so many of these mids where they just kind of forgot about Regan. Some peekaboo. He goes invisible and object permanence not quite th there yet for East Storm. Not able to deal with nice. him. That was a great play with the crack shot. Yeah, I, wow. It's really show. I mean, he and he gets the flare too, with plus the ability to do that. I need. I want to see these teams adapt a little bit more to the back lines. Right. I, I really feel like they're not. They're either not playing in angles that force the back line right. in further to find the picks, right? Or they're just choosing just walk in the open and oh, we'll do our damage before they do theirs. And, and right. that's. I mean, at least about how these back lines are playing. I don't know if that's the strategy you want to be adopting. I think it was like the first fight in the game. It was it was Koga like tried to run it at Regan and then immediately <laughs> got opt and swapped and it was just I think from then on they said we'll try to win the rest of the fight yeah. <laughs> and hopefully Regan doesn't tear us apart uh, but Regan did classified strike back to one now in this set Eastorm looking for an answer back in uh, the next game which will be right after this respawn the official gaming chair of the Paladins console league. Welcome back to the Paladins Console League, guys. A bizarre map pick on Bizarre. And on top of that, Classified ended up winning it. Now they're up 2-1 against East Storm. And not only can't really say that I'm impressed, like, once again, I was expecting yeah. this a little bit to be one-sided in the favor of Classified. It was kind of one-sided, but also not really right, at the right, same right, time, right. where it's just... Very, very contested. I'm actually thoroughly impressed again with East Storm coming through. But between map one and three, I think what I'm seeing is maybe a history. Uh, obviously, with their both of them being their map picks, mm -hmm. it has been much more in their favor. And it feels like they know the map a little better. So being able to take right. the 4-3 the first time around, unfortunately for them, losing it this time means it's a little shakier for me. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering, I mean, since they get to continue choosing where they go next and how strong they're going to be on it. Right, exactly. I mean and where they're going to end up being for at least game four in this case, which could potentially be the last game for a classified. Serpent Beach is the map we could be ending on if classified end up keeping their momentum in these two wins it is they've gotten back to back. They could make it three wins in a row, may, meaning that it, they would end it 3-1 against East Storm. But once again, East Storm could just very well be able to make this comeback. I think uh, an interesting one that could come through here. We see snipers on this map pretty right. often. Strix has been very big in the Premier League on this map lately. Mm -hmm. And going from a good Strix game on Bazaar to a good Strix game on Serpent Beach would be a very easy transition, I think, for Classified to come through. I'm also going to throw it out there. I'm pretty sure it's one of the first snipers I've actually seen win with how yeah. many times I've seen a sniper Before. picked on Bazaar. They just they don't come out successful most of the time. So that was very yeah. nice to see. I mean, it is... And I do agree with that because of the fact that, like you said, they don't really come out successful because of the fact of how Bazaar is shaped. Most of the time, you're just already staring down a sniper anyway from at least a good spot or two. So, I mean, I can understand completely as to how that's extremely exciting. And also, I was very excited, too, to be able to see that pulled off. In other words, though, Atlas. Now, we saw him a little bit earlier in the morning today. Nothing 
too crazy except for the fact that he did I extremely, extremely him. well. Yeah. But now we're seeing him again, and he's been led through. And can do extremely well, can also fall flat. The it kind of depends on the guy piloting banners, him. Run. And it, it also depends pretty heavily on how much you're able to use his cooldowns. I mean, earlier when we saw him mm -hmm. on Splitstone Quarry, Exile was not only hardly ever used, if at all, I honestly don't even recall seeing it, but it, it needs to be impactful. Finding right. impact from Exile can be very fight. difficult, but that up. is, I think, crucial to turning Atlas from just Your being okay body. to being incredibly strong for your team, right? right? To be, be a tide turner for just you is to be able to find that ult. Obviously, good setbacks also factor into that. I agree. Barrett Furia being locked in right after that. Atlas, Leon, Vivian on the other side, along with the Makoa. Now, here's what's interesting about East Storm's composition is that they have a Furia. Atlas already does a lot of damage. You and are not it's welcome insane here. how much he can do for a frontliner. Furia, tack that on top of what Barrett can do, as well as the presence he has on point. And you're already talking about a very interesting composition. In return, they're also looking at Drogos and Strix to be able to close out this lineup for East Star. Meanwhile, Classified has a very sustainable comp, I would yeah. say. So Vivian Leon make Drogos maybe a little timid. Leon more so than the Vivian, but... Right. That's a knockout lineup for me, Storm. Like that, that is a winning lineup to me on oh. East Storm. Atlas, Barrick, Furia, Drogo, Strix on Serpent Beach. Seal the deal in my eyes. Io is going to be interesting, but... Interesting. I think that's all I can say about Classified. I can't say this is a winning composition for them. East Storm yeah. knocked it out of the park here. I mean, I, I'm i just more so surprised because of the quickness and certainty they locked in Io, like uncontested whatsoever, knowing that she will potentially, could potentially be a good pick in this case. However... We won't know until we actually see it. Casters take us right into the game. Alrighty, well, game four hangs in the balance. East Storm looking to find themselves a tying game. A little bit of Io coming out for Classified this time around, notably solo heal Io, which is, I think, a little bit more interesting than not only just the Io pick herself. We normally see her paired kind of as an off healer, off damage but that's all the healing they've got this time around. Yeah, they do have lifelink, though. So yep. they have the two different sources of healing, similar to... I, I almost say, when people talk about Furia without her Solar Blessing or Aya without lifelink, it's almost like playing Damba without their Gourd. Sure. But if it brings utility, then it's okay, like it does with Cherish or like it does with Aya, with you know? Uh, the DR, very strong. I could see them not even using the Fox early. I could see them just putting the Fox on point and then running across with four, but... Right. Looks like they are going to have the Fox on top, and I can spread her directed healing wherever she needs to. Interesting to pick the Drogos into two hit scans, and well, I guess if Pow is just going to hit shots like that, I guess it doesn't really matter now that Drogos is more or less uncontested. Oh my. Very low health bars for Classified here. East Storm may be looking to push this one down. Do just that. Hook, thank you very much. I actually almost brought him up. Found him another kill. Pow, though, double kill. This time around, the Strix starting to fire. Classified already forced back. 30% on the point for East Storm here, hanging out behind the wall there is Io. She's able to dance her way out of it. They might actually get a kill here. Actually, bowling ball shielding. Oh, that's so much damage for Pots. They walk right out around the corner into a Drogos double kill for him. And East Storm, they're looking great for point number one. The Drogos in me is just salivating right yeah, there. Yeah. Just imagining that. That's so good. You never see that, but you're always happy when you do, and tons of damage for Pots. And both tanks going down really staggered means this card's going to move uncontested for a pretty long amount of time. Honestly, East Storm could get their Strix. If they move fast enough, they could get him on the high ground. Right. They could get him all the way over to the Oasis, and that's ideal, I, I think, for this scenario. But the DPSs are up, so there's a lot of damage they'd have to cross to get there. Temporal Divide might be the opening, but it looks <laughs> like Pow is very far back, kind of playing that cart, and now Orange Angle to apply a little bit of pressure. A Temporal Divide uh, wall never ceases to uh, take me by surprise. Pretty nuts how big it is. Dragon Punch used. Looks like the cooldown was consumed as well as Regan finds a double kill. So a bit of a blunder there for East Storm after a great start from them. X-Pow, six streak for him, undying up to this point. Classified, looking to get involved, looking to stall things out. Vertical mobility is of course always kind of what we talk about around this point of Serpent Beach. Not too much of it. But E-Storm will have that Worm Jets Drogos allowing them to get up a little bit higher. 
Weirdly, Pal kind of pushing alone, not waiting for his his Atlas, and right, gets, gets does out. actually. Yeah, he does manage to barely get away, and Brockus lives. I think Vivian thought that he knocked Brockus off, and it ended up paying for him. He had to pay his life for right. that mistake, and now Pau disengaging a little bit. Actually, Brockus had to reset back himself all the way back in there using that second chance, so he's going to go down here as well. And so strong defense so far by Classified, but I feel like they're just they're not dealing with Pau properly. I think they, they did it pretty well at the start, holding back and defending him, sure. crossing those angles. Even with the divide up, I think they put on enough pressure. But now, oh, they're ignoring Pots here, too. Pots might be able to find this kill here, but Regan, perfect canceling of his abilities. Turns that right around, and now Eastorm are just completely surrounded in this dial side. He said, you thought I was ignoring you. I was just calculating how much damage I could take before I turned around and killed you off. Eastorm stalled out after a magnificent start to this game. They go up 1-0. Classified looking to tie things up with a good defense here. Of course, Io is the healer, if you're just tuning in with us. Classified, pick her up. Counter gets a kill here. He noticed any, I mean, it's been a very quiet game, honestly, for, for Classified up to this point. Has, has Io stood out to you in any way, shape, or form? I don't really think so. I think her healing is pretty solid. She does have that great pocket heal, but as the game goes on, I think what she brings is gonna be a little bit worse, considering her ultimate is good, but not great. Sure. And they actually, look at this early pressure from the right side. The Fox healing is not enough to keep Makoa up. Yeah. Vivian barely so being nice. pocketed, but just not enough even without high corner eyes. Yeah, I mean, you're getting a checkerboard of kills. Red, blue down the back side. Regan looking for the kill on to Pow. One more shot will do it. Does it. Slides out. Overtime begins. Counter drops off. That's the last ditch effort, and we're tied at one. Ultimate's online for both teams, too. Only Sentinel's really not up for Ian Hart. They're on the Vivian. Unfortunately, Vivian not playing Vivian again. So we're going to have to call him Stop. specifically Makoa for this next period of time. x pow though, 7-1. and one. Again, they're just The back lines in this game are so hard for either team to deal with or, or get on at all. Yeah. They're never able to find the space they need to pressure them. And when they Point kind of one, flounder at doing that, seconds. they always end up staying in front of them. They always end right. up peeking those sight lines. And, you can see it on the damage charts. I mean, both back lines very high up. Atlas doing a great job, too. Atlas Brockus, I think, was doing good pressuring the side. I think his shields were well placed, but his team, I think, needs to find a little bit more with them if they want to win this mid fight. Uh, Mr. Pickles hoping to make a difference on the IO this time around. Might get a look at the first usage of it towards this mid. The be gone. That's right. Not just yet in flame for uh, classified or from East Storm, excuse me. Going to start this one out. Seismic Crash drops down as well as the Dome Shield. Here comes the Dragon Punch. Going to get killed off before he can use it. So just a bit of movement for V8 Pots here in this case. Some more kills from Pow coming out in the back line. Drogo seals it up. And once you know it, East Storm win themselves another mid with a chance to zone. Point number two. You're for sure not mad. If, if you go to Dragon Punch and the Makoa dies before you even get there, you're fine. You're yeah, like, okay. all right, guys, sure. If you don't need me, that's fine. I'll just, I'll just get out of here. Three people from Classified all playing up top, trying to pressure out Pots, but he gets forced back a little bit. Now, no Ancient Rage for the touch here. The Inara will walk in there in mid, but oh, actually, no, Counter died. Two yeah. Ianhard trying to stop this touch, and now they have that even trades back and forth so far, but I think East Storm actually have pretty good positioning to hold this. Up and over the Exiles ring out here. One more shot onto Potts will do it. Mr. Pickles showing that Io has a little bit of damage as well. Classified win, the retake attempt in E Storm. Now on the back foot. Need a last ditch effort to try to get in here and find themselves to touch. X Pow might be the one to do it. Not sure he knew. There was a Makoa hanging out in the wings. At any rate, though, Regan finishes that one off. Counter just gets zoned out, has to walk out and around the wall. And that's enough time in that overtime to give Classified the next point. Perfectly set up, too. He also dropped the Warder Shield next to the wall as well, so he didn't have a chance to go yeah. through that. Pots, though, kind of suicide bombing onto Vivian, but does get away at the last second now. Everyone has to regroup on the card for Classified without their Makoa holding that high ground. It's so important. Thankfully for them, though, they're, they're not picking Pau's angle. Pau is up there on New Ledge, nowhere that can really see them on the ground, but... It's going to be rough if they try to take upper. Smartly, Pow rotates, put himself a little bit more in main, and be a little bit more of a threat to the classified roster. This is, you know, Pow has had a great game up to this point, but if Strix is going to be happy anywhere, it's going to be right here, knowing everyone from classified has got to move forward, especially those big temporal divides. Pot's had a great start, but is, is somewhat quieted down as he adds a kill onto Vivian here in this case. Things starting to slow down though. E Storm looking to confirm this defense and tie this one up. Some good Drogo shots 
might just do that. I think Pots is playing pretty well, but how do you keep up a pace of four people stacking on top yeah. of each other? It, yeah. It's really hard to keep up with that pace. I think he's doing well considering he's into almost double counter. I think he's playing around his divides pretty well. You can see here he can kite back at any time, but Leon's down. He doesn't need to. Counters all over Ian Hart on this Vivian, so Pot's still pretty free here. They lose Brockus for it, but he's still able to just rain down. He has to back up from this hook, though. I mean, he's been hooked a couple times, I think, so far. <laughs> Very dangerous. Regan will get him on the respawn, but Pal's still up, covering a lot of space for East Orb. Well, we're halfway done here with the push. Payload not moving forward just yet. East Storm has seen to it that Classified has not had any free movement, and Flame comes out there. So East Storm will look to take advantage of that, find a few kills. Ian Hart looking for just a few more shots. Brockus, though, finds the kill. Temporal Divide saves his life for maybe the last couple of IO shots around the corner there. One for one trade on the back end of it. V8 Pots looking to trade out with Regan down here on the low ground. You got a Makoa waiting in the wings for you. The setback's going to deliver him to the opposite side. He gets hooked right back through. Regan finds the kill. Now we're down to 20 seconds left for Classified to try to force it in. Pal crosses the top and catches the healer for Classified, so no healing for them. They, if they play a sustained fight now, they'd be in a pretty big advantage. Dome Shield gets forced, though. I don't know if that was necessary with the positioning that their DPS have. Gonna be rough not having that for the next fight, but I think East Storm will now almost certainly hold. No more ultimates should be used, just damage coming up from up coming in from up top going to help them hold it. Rockus, did, I think he got a little over aggressive yeah. on that last time. He could have waited maybe two seconds for a second chance to be back up and then gone in. Didn't end up mattering. They did have to spend the dome shield, I think, because of his death, his attempt to reposition. But right. they're doing a good job at dealing with dealing with the threats on Classified. I mean, one and nine for Vivian on Makoa. That's, that's tough. I mean, you can see when you're getting focused down this hard, this inflame crack shotted boost, that's, that's unreal. The yeah. amount of damage coming out of strips right there. Pavs had a, a very solid game up to this point. Top damage, 13, 2, and 7. Solid might be an understatement in that regard. More the same will help East Storm force their way back into this set. Currently down 2 1. Classified could seal everything up with another couple points in this one. East Storm could tie it up with another couple points in this one. I think the Vivian Ian Hart being kept below the damage of the barrack is showing how well East Storm is kind of locking down the threats from Classified. Sure. They're making sure that they can't really they can't really free fire the ways they need to. Great beam actually gets Mr. Pickles caught out, but he'll be able to reheal off his lifelink. Unfortunate missed shell spin too. Yep. So Vivian now has to walk in with this ancient rage. <laughs> Doesn't get it off in time. Basically no scope to the face, but go, even pow. trades back and forth. Yeah, a couple kills from Pow as well. One of them onto the Makoa. Ancient Rage will be ready if they are going to have time to get back in and use it. Wolf doing some good healing for Zundel down there onto the point. Kind of passive healing there for Io. Mr. Pickles is going to try to re-up that cooldown. Forced off now is classified. Ancient Rage still ready. Be gone still ready as well. But E-Storm, they have some ultimates to play with as well. A good second chance, but that just opens up the floodgates. E-Storm, four straight kills. Now they're zoning out classified with the chance to put it to set point. If they dismount the Sonara, then I think the timing of these kills is perfect too. Looks like they're back up actually. Vivian pressure keeping them from shooting the Inara down. Actually, she might get stopped by this this Drogo's here. She's gonna take a lot of damage on the way in. DR used very early. Inflame used too means it kind of counteracts the damage reduction. Not gonna mean quite as much. Be gone. I don't think it connected on anything. So now that the Inara is down, no presence at all for Classified. Three immediately fall. Yeah, goodbye Classified. It looks like East Storm are well on their way to this next point. Regan, not even gonna try it. Overtime expires. East Storm now pushing to seal up this win, extend the set to a five game, fifth game. Nobody has been able to uh, to push yet. Nobody on uh, nobody on Bazaar, nobody on this map. It's been a hell of a thing to find a push in this set. It's so hard on this map, especially when they don't really, they only have the Drogos for these high ground takes. I guess they could, nah, I was gonna say maybe they could set back someone back down, but no one's gonna be falling and going back on Classified, so very tough for them to find it. Pots might get hooked here, playing a little safe. I think they could collapse on this Vivian if they choose to, but Ian Hart smartly backs up using that movement speed gifted to him in his base loadout. Good control, I think, so far from Eastorm. No DPS is on the high ground other than that Vivian, so the Leon being on the low ground gives Pots a lot of room, especially where she's playing. Orange is kind of a rough spot for a long-range backline DPS to be. Yeah, Ian Hart. It's just a little bit too close to the Drogos there, and now Classified are all caught out. They're going to get pinched from multiple angles here. Potts tries to find the shots, doesn't do so. Enlightenment from Regan rips on through, gets 50% of that cooldown back. East Storm getting decimated here. It looks like they were in an okay position to pinch in on Classified. 
Classified just hang together, find the kills, and look okay on this defense. Looks like rough comms for E-Storm, I think. If they had called two pots that, ever, that the Leon was backing up from Orange, I think he would have been looking more in that area, but he was just spamming the tanks instead. It sounds more instead of like a clear, these people are in Orange, it was more of like a, right. uh, shoot Orange, <laughs> they're in Orange, and, and that's, that's rough. You know, yeah. in the in the situations, you need very distinct communication on, on what to be doing, who's where, so you can you know plan your ultimates and your takes properly, especially on Serpent Beach when high ground control is so key. Well, they're communicating now, and in flame was the call. They find the first kill on the MH Vivian on the Makoa. Ian Hart is able to kite back, find a kill. So many low health bars for classified. If Potts is able to free fire and stay alive, he might be able to take advantage. He does just that. But Regan's still alive, slides in, and Lightman rips through, doesn't connect this time around. That's going to spell death. x a nice double kill. As Makoa now has respawned back in this fight. 15 seconds remaining. If it doesn't look like we're going to another .7 Kresnik, I don't know what. Yeah, I mean, they might they might be able to do this. They waited, they have time with ultimates. If Classified use ult here, they could hold it for sure. They don't have Enlightenment, and actually, they might want to do something. Temporal Divide, they're rushing in, but the shield to protect... Okay, yeah, Ian Hart got protected. Atlas has a second chance out. Unless they find a kill immediately, okay. and they miss the, the shots on the Ian. Oh. Okay. And actually, two going down quick means Eastorm could still take this. It was rough at the start, but they might have the healing to go through this, but Classified spending ults now to hold this. They're very desperate. They want to go to point seven. Yeah, Classified looking for just that. Eastorm. Holding on to their ultimates right now. X-Pow with another good shot. Regan very low on the health bar, forced backwards. Zundel hanging out behind the wall. One more kill onto the Inara. Might seal things up. Ancient Rage used out here from Vivian. Trying to find the kill onto X-Pow. Does do that, but 160 health left. East Storm starting to push through. Dome Shield might just seal this one up. Classified dropping off. All you have left is an IO. You're going to have to fight into a Dome Shield. That's going to hurt. Down goes the IO, but the Inara now is back off of respawn. If Inara is able to stall things out, things could look good. Everyone's starting to use all of their ultimates. Shellspin gets exiled out. That's just going to go on to Vivian time and time again. But you still got Inara on the opposite side. Now in flame, starting to get used here from Eastorm. Gets locked up, gets stunned out. Eastorm looks like it's in a great spot. The Wolf contesting just for a One moment second. at the end. And Eastorm, gutsy calls there to use their ultimates. Looked like they might want to hold it. They elect to go for it. They find themselves the win, and we got a game five. Smart by them, I think. As soon as Classified started using it, just trade with them, because yeah. if you get the better ults, you win. If you True. don't, then you're going to 3-3. Neither of you have ultimates. It's definitely the safe call, right. I think, at that point. As soon as they used that Ancient Rage, I, I knew things were going to be over for Classified. Yeah. They did, did not need to use that. They got on POW, finally. I, I will say, I was chastising them for kind of letting him free fire. That was their difference maker for it. You can't spend a resource like that on sure. it, I think. I mean, it, it, it was close through and through. I mean, this whole set really has been there. There was one that was very lopsided, the, the triple DPS, triple yeah. tank conversation. Uh, but top to bottom, this one has been been back and forth the entire time as we look at the post-game stats. Get an idea of what happened in there on the back end. 130k damage for the man Pow himself on the sniper. 19 streak is good for top in the game. That might be all you need to see. He also did five times the amount of damage he took. He only took 25. He had yeah. only like 400 or 320 more right. than his healer. That's crazy. That, that just shows how little pressure he was taking. The, the tanks did soak up a lot of it, but so much Whew. from POW. 22 and yeah. 3, and one of those deaths was an Ancient Rage. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's... You look at 22, 3, and 13. 4K credits. Second highest in the game with count on the opposite side. 1 in 16 on Vivian, too. They definitely shut down that Makoa. On Makoa? Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> 1 in 16 on Vivian on Makoa. There you go. You can tell it's so hard for them to get onto Pow. I think he was the one, Vivian was the one who was supposed to be making that distance yeah. to get onto him. But you can see here, I mean, we, we saw this. The Inflame plus crack shot damage boost. Not only is he doing 15, 60, but I, I don't know the DPS of that off the top of my head with all those boosts being yeah, stacked high. up. Hi. I think that's all we need to say. We saw how fast he went down. Even the Dragon Punch couldn't cross the map in time. So good by him. Little no-scope. Well, basically a no-scope headshot as the Makoa trying to walk yeah. in. That's nuts. Strix so good right now in this meta, I think. Just that burst damage combined with all these damage boosts really mess up people's internal timings. You're just not you're just not ready for it most of the time. Able to dodge out that uh, Enlightenment. That's an unofficial triple right there from Pal. I counted it in my head. <laughs> Going to a game five, things hang in the balance. There's been moments out throughout this set where Classified have looked very, very good, looking ready to take it. Eastorm have been fighting back the entire time. I wonder 
moving into this next one. I mean, it might just come down to if Pow is able to sit back and free fire. We'll have to see. They have to figure out something at this point, whether it's a flanker or just better trades. They got to find something out. Well, wait and find out what classified elect to do right after this break is game five. Steel Series, the official peripheral provider of the Paladins Console League. Welcome back to the PCL, guys. We definitely have one more game and we are going to have to end up watching because of the fact that both East Storm and Classified have both evened up the score. We're looking at a 2-2 after Serpent Beach. East Storm was able to clutch it out, make sure that they actually did what they needed to. And now that we're tied at 2-2, we're going to be going to the fifth game. Yeah, being able to come through. This is actually, I think, a more defining moment through mm -hmm. all of this. That was a very, very solid game from East Storm. Mm -hmm. But now... Classified kind of get to choose the ring, right? right? That they get to go fight in. And the last time that happened, we saw a uh, four-zero. That was really fast. So I think both of these tombs, or both of these teams, <laughs> <You're> both <laughs> putting each other in their tombs, however you want to look yeah, at it, but right. <laughs> have been have been able to kind of showcase their strengths. Have been able to maybe showcase some of their weaknesses mm. in this region, but definitely why they are two and three, neck and neck. So still a lot to be able to come through. And honestly, whoever wins this one is kind of the defining second place team, even if maybe the standings won't reflect it at the end. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have to take a look and see what our game five map is in this scenario. We're going to take a look, see what we got in store for us. The Splitstone Quarry, of course, which is the map it is that they will be ending on for Palins constantly, the PCL in East Storm versus Classified, which is going to be pretty interesting. Um, yeah. I mean, once again, Splitstone, not a map you see as often, really on PC because of the fact that you brought up a good point. A point it is that I'm glad it was made was the fact that normally you have a wider variety of maps it is you can pick from. Don't really see Splitstone in them because there's a lot more, e I guess, is easier the way to put yeah. it? Yeah, well, it's like, and, and so in my eyes in these sets, it's specifically like, it'd be really easy to ban Ascension Peak, right. Frozen Guard, Ice Mines, Timber Mill, Step and then the Shotgun Blast, Paris. Stone Keep, mm -hmm. Bright Marsh, Jag Falls for your three maps and be done with the set kind of deal, right? So this is one that doesn't, or, well, usually doesn't come up as often unless you're facing either specific teams where you have some strengths against them or if maybe, you know, you are looking for a fifth game and you're like, right, man, where right. do we go now? We banned out <laughs> some of the other ones and you choose Split Stone Quarry. Yeah, I mean, makes a lot of sense to me. Constrix are both being locked in on East Storm side as well. Genos so is locked mouth. in on Classify side, which I do appreciate, Barrick being one of the picks as well. Thing about Genos is that we see the damage it can do when you pair it with a hit scan character such In as Vivian, I which is who I was about dream. to lead into, but you already see her up there on screen. She is already a very, very strong hit scan presence. Coupling her with Genos, Opportunity and Chaos, I put Luminary, to Opportunity and Chaos together. You got a lot of damage. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a good combo. The biggest thing that's going to counter it out right now on the side of E-Storm is the Strix, which, mm. again, two games ago, you have Classified running. It looks really good. The Last game, it runs running. the show on Serpent right. Beach. And now with Aphiria and Inflame behind it, again, with some of the stealth changes that have happened, when he takes damage, he's not going to get popped out. Mm. It makes it just easier, I think, on this map specifically. He can poke out, find some shots. Pretty simply onto Vivian, onto Barrack, onto Genos. Nobody. And maybe on the Leon if she gets locked in. But Willow 
is kind of the key factor. While technically that trade is negative die, for her, there is no she can kind of blast and splash around even if she can't see him, even mm -hmm. if she can't hit him. It's just denial of area to maybe right. keep Strix compacted away. Right, exactly. In this case, though, we have the Eevee. Not that often of a pick that you see pretty much almost never in yeah. QCL. You don't see Eevee being busted out, even if it is a good map for her to be on. You don't normally see that. You don't typically see the fact that Eevee is here because of the fact that she requires a lot of movement. And that's, I think, the biggest thing is, uh, you know, a lot of flick shots, a lot of versatility mm. in your movement that comes through. We've seen her today. We've seen her do really well today. And I, I don't know if East Storm can keep it up, but I, I'm anxious to see. So am I. We're going to get right into game five, guys. This is it. This is for all of the marbles. Take us into the game, casters. Every single marble on the table up for grabs here between Classified and East Storm. Splitstone Corey is where we're going to do battle. One more triple DPS composition for Classified, notably, and worked out pretty well last time, not playing into a triple front line on the opposite side though that's important to consider no terminus in this game either but another Eevee we haven't seen Eevee quite as much in this set uh, the pots on the Drogos last time around if you want to draw some sort of parallel mm -hmm. uh, at least looked pretty good so that that Eevee Willow matchup I think would be very interesting to watch yeah and it's gonna be I think this is a great map for triple DPS it really does come down a lot to how quickly pots can can hit his shots and find targets because if he's, if he's just dying immediately trying to get into this triple DPS, it's going to be very hard for him. Oh. And actually, almost untouched that entire yeah. time. So if that continues, it's, it's looking a lot better for them. But he has to find these shots for this to be worth. And Ian Hart hits him. He goes down immediately. Control starting for Eastorm, but they might trade pots for this. Yeah, everyone was looking in the opposite direction. Finally getting damaged out just a little bit. It's going to soar his way back onto the lava side of the map here. But... Blinks in, finds some damage, blinks out. Classified hanging back. Their respawn point here. Potts just a little bit too aggressive that time around. Vivian hitting everything he needed to. Brockus, good double kill for East Storm on the, the con this time around. Bowling ball, rocket boots, gets Zundel out and away. East Storm 66% on this mid. Classified have just been trying to retake this entire time. A good zone here. You're gonna get to at least 90%. Maybe one last try for classified. I think Zundel's doing a good job staying alive in this barrack. It's so important with triple DPS that your solo tank lives a long time. And Potts goes down without really doing anything on the side. So great for classified while they retake here. Regan on the low ground gonna spam Sonara back. Unfortunately, hits the dead zone right in front of himself. So no healing denied for them, but that Anara is still pushed out, and Regan could take this high ground if he chooses to. Around the backside is Ian Hart here. Could look for the Aggression, but the Inara gets nice and healed up. Forced back is the Vivian. It's classified now on the, the midpoint. Looks like Enlightenment did rip through, maybe found a little bit of damage. We're gonna have an overtime beginning here as uh, Classified, excuse me, are now up to 99%. One for one trade counter, and Ian Hart getting swapped out as Regan on the Faith Flight tries to just zone out Khan. He does more than that, finds the kill. Classified with a two for zero trade around the backside. Might have just sealed this one up. And strike first here on Splitstone. Blast Flower is so good at fighting against Khan. As long as you're just chipping him barely, you're maintaining your stack. So not really much you could do once the pressure was on. Oh. They actually do catch Regan on the way out. So Easter might be able to stabilize a little bit here. Vivian on the Leon getting... <laughs> I, can't, I can't not laugh when I say stuff like that. Getting pushed out a little bit, but... Genosold actually, through time and space, catches Pow. So classified, they started down, but they quickly turned it around. Seismic Crash is gonna find some value here. Double stun, Ian Hart gets dropped off. Potts finds the kill. But counter just took, took too, way too much damage on the back side of it. Zundel as well drops off the Eevee. Payload rolling down Main Street. You seismic crash for East Storm. Only Dome Shield is ready to go. Through time and space was used. Enlightenment almost ready for classified. East Storm fighting back with just an Ice Storm, just an overpower. Well, strike that one off the list. That's down to back, back down to 30% as he misses it. Pow though finds the shot onto Pickle. So classified fighting without damage and without healing. For a moment, it looks like a good defense, at least for a second, for East Storm. Yeah, great, great opening pick. I mean, getting the healer at any time. I think Genos is probably the best healer to have on your team that gets picked first. Yeah. Like if you, if you, if you, if I had any healer that died first in a fight, I'd rather be Genos because at least he keeps healing for a little bit. Right. After he goes down, you know, Ying's illusions disappear. Genos's marks don't really go away. He can still kind of maintain that boost, keep his team up. As the fight goes on longer, obviously it's it's awful to have him gone, but <laughs> East Storm. 
Got that pick, ran with it, managed to retake this high ground. Very aggressive, Ooh, great shot nice by shot. Potts onto Vivian. Taking him down, getting rid of that potential high ground pressure that Classified had. They have to wait another 10 seconds, or probably five at this point, for him to come back. A lot of time bought just from that one to pick. That's why aggressive defense is making these plays is just so good, so yep. influential. The EV has looked pretty decent up to this point. So is the Willow on the opposite side. Not quite game changing as we saw in some of our previous sets, but uh, nonetheless turning heads, finding some shots, making life for Classified a little bit more difficult. Potts gonna look to do that. Rips through, double kill now for MH on the Leon. Regan adds another one, and E-Storm are getting wiped here. The Blast Flower stacks doing so much damage. Zero kills for E-Storm, five for Classified. They're gonna have to maybe zone out just one last time here. They do have an EV, so they will be able to blink in and get the touch, five seconds left. But you gotta be careful not to trade yourself out. The tanks, the tanks dying at the same time is so bad for them. And now Fury has gone too. Oh, that's so much sustain out of the fight. The tanks both managed to touch at the same time, but they can just get focused down immediately. Pots going to probably fall <laughs> right away with Ian Hart right there. And Pouch trying to make a difference, but Ian Hart is just uncontested over here. Counter tries to buy a little bit of time, but it's not enough. Classified take it up 2-0. Oh, and I said, Good triple DPS map. Yeah. It really is. I think Vivian's been putting on a clinic on this Leon so far, countering out pots very hard. It's really hard to play Eevee into Leon Vivian. Yeah, it, it's just looked unstoppable for Classified around the back side. Top four damage in the game with Pow wedged right in the middle. So I guess top two and then four and five. In 15 seconds. At any rate, though, if uh, you're out damaging a Strix as a Leon Vivian and then Right there is Willow. One more shot really will, will overtake. Five, Triple DPS four, working out very well. Three, two, four streaked out members. And Zundel is the solo tank in a Triple DPS composition. Has done a good job of staying alive. Yeah, I was about to say, a lot of props to him. Because he's been really not handling, not collapsing under the pressure. Yeah. I think coming in between the Eevee and the Strix. Ice Storm coming in usually would be used to catch out the Barrack used on the side instead. It still manages to convert two quick ones, though. Zundel now has to back up off the point. He will probably go down, but dying on the point is pretty much the best you can ask for. Dishonor getting caught out, which means no healing for the retake, though. Yeah, and, and MH just buying a little bit of time. Looks like East Storm will have fast cap charging up for them. Classified definitely within the realm of being able to get a touch on this mid. Depending on when they choose to go. Through time and space is ready. Maybe keep your eyes on Mr. Pickles if he wants to turn things around. Plenty of low health bars here. Zundel is up front, gets Seismic crashed out, did get the touch, but didn't come in time, and Flame as well on the back side of it. That's just way too much. Classified, pull one kill back at the end, but E-Storm retake that mid thanks to a little fast cap. Unfortunate for Zundel there. He tried to touch, but Ultimate's in his, in his way through time and space, not spent to try to keep him alive. So now E-Storm in a great position with the timing of that fight. They already had this very important high ground taken, so now they can keep holding it. Pots just a little bit too forward into Ian Hart. So much damage coming out from that Vivian. Really hard to, there's, you only have so little time on Eevee. Right. You have to immediately react. When, as soon as you see the Vivian, you have to blink back. And it's hard, especially if you don't play it a lot. And Vivian's kind of only played, Eevee, excuse me, is only played on this map. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's a fair assessment, I would say. As Regan flutters his way in there, finds the kill. On to Pow. So Classified will look to seal up this defense, move it into maybe one final mid, seal up the set. Triple DPS has been looking pretty good for them. MH, another double kill on the Leon. Something I've said a couple times so far throughout this game. Pow's been a little quieter on the Strix. He's had a couple tear games today. Strix most notably in the last one, 5-5-7. Five, five, Not quite the uh, the triple positive that we're used to seeing out of him. Yeah, I think it's just been part of how the triple DPS works. You know, they're kind of waiting and baiting in their own angles to let other people come in, and Pow until Classified tries to push, he's not really seeing too much. Because if he drops, he's I think he's going to find it way too hard to get away between Livy, Leon and Willow Burst. Sure. There's just too much, I think, for him to, to, to try to get away with. So in these situations, when, when he's zoning them out, he can kind of push them back a bit. But now, that they're if they hold around this corner, if the Willow doesn't peak Pow at all, they have the advantage. Triple DPS, yep. just the ability to spam, lets them do a lot more into the Strix. Find the first kill as well. There's the Fae Flight, wrapping around the backside. He knows where Pow is, but Pow knows where he is. Gets the better of that trade. Finally, Vivian helps his team clean that one up. MH, not the actual champion, Vivian. Double kill for the Leon. As Classified dig those heals in, forcing back E-Storm, who have four ultimates ready. Seismic Crash soon to be up. 
They use the Faith Light to buy some space there, classified, and I don't really mind that decision. We're going to be one down going into the next mid, but still plenty of ultimates that could be very impactful. For sure, they have a pretty big advantage, so I definitely don't mind that at all. I was going to say that just the pressure that I don't think Eastorm is doing this right into them. I don't know. I feel like they could be touching the point, forcing the solo tank to go in, and then hard focusing him, but maybe that's just not an option for them this early in the game. Yeah. You know, they need that Wrecker online to really be able to burn Zundal. And I feel like he's been doing a great job at staying alive. Whoa. Only three deaths on him. 21 and 5 yeah. for MH Vivian. Just so hard for them to deal with. He's bursting down the EV so well. And I think he's just finding a lot of kills onto Dishonor as well. Dishonor has kind of been a little out in the open for the composition he's playing against. I don't know if he's really used to playing against this triple DPS. He has, he's tied for top deaths on his team with his Eevee. Yeah. Yeah, it's not been the same convincing Eevee performance that we've seen throughout the day. One in 10 on Dishonor as well. That's tough. Granted, it's, it's you know, a Furia, but it's a lot of deaths to have on the healer as well as is on the flanky Eevee on the opposite side. Last round of items maybe being spent here for E-Storm. They've had a good comeback in this set. The classified could seal this one up with a win on this mid fight right here. Pal's going to look to try to make the difference, and Flame on the back of E-Storm is going to force them forward. Seismic Crash Rift through everything, starting to get used. No kills just yet. The first one, though, that's Zundel on a Dishonor. Potts blinks in, finds the kill on Ian Hart. Mr. Pickles, though, getting involved now. That's a good Ice Storm, but Vivian finds the kill here in this case. Zundel stays alive, gets himself a double kill as well and now classified their zoning not only for the game, but for the entire set. That's the healer difference. Dishonor going down first again means the solo tank has a sustained advantage, and that's not something you ever want to hear on the receiving end of it. Zundel, I think, doing a great job. Broncos did manage to get in, but getting taken down so low, he'll be able to survive very long. And Nara will get a touch on the point, but with the first pick going to classified, this is going to be a mountain that they have to climb. One last fight to try to bring it back. Ian Hart may have just sealed it up. A double kill on Vivian. Make it three in this final fight. No more legs for East Storm, and no more chances to pull this set back as Classified find themselves the win. They just played that map, I think, to a T. They, yeah. they really abused the Eevee and the Furia using the, their ability to rotate. Leon sure. can dash from the high to the bleachers, kind of taking some angles there, dropping in. Willow can do the same. Right. Just so much flexibility in what they can do, and it just it just picked them apart. It did. Found it, the, it, the, the, the triple DPS looked great today for, sure. for Classified of their three wins, two of them with the triple, triple DPS composition, excuse me. But good fight back there from East Storm. I mm -hmm. mean, in those middle maps, Classified were really starting to kind of run away with things and, and being able to fight back in game four there to tie up this set for East Storm. Uh, you have to give them a little tip of the cap. But at the end of the day, Classified, another triple DPS for them, finds themselves a win. Get another look at that willow EV interaction. This time, though, the Willow coming out on top, at least game-wise, 30k damage on the EV. That's a tough hill to climb. Yeah, it's not really... It was mostly used just for, for confirmations following up on kills. Sure. Eevee wasn't really hitting enough mid-range shots sure. to make a difference. And I, we always talk about it in PPL. That's what makes separates a good Eevee from a great Eevee. Right. And Pots was, wasn't finding... He was only finding the shots when he had to go in very deep. And if you're that close to somebody, it's really hard to judge how long you can sure. live, especially when you have so little health like an Eevee does. We also we can't ignore Vivian's stats. We cannot. And I mean MH Vivian. Of course. Not, not the other Vivian. MH Vivian... This poor horse so is being beaten, but it, but it's it's funny every time we. I, it's, I at it's least a think it's funny. I at least think it's funny. Uh, but you're right. Twenty-two, five, and seven. Can't look anywhere else. I mean, in a game of uncontested backliners, making the difference it's about as uncontested as you could find. I mean, and there were even times where he was contested, but like, and he's able to win these these quick snapshot engagements. Just played this one to a T. 20 plus kills is hard to surpass Fury Storm. Especially since the person that was trying to stop him was the class that he, the character that he counters right. the most. Right. I mean, it was it was Eevee. When you think bad matchups for Eevee, I think Leon is so high up there on the table. I think it's like Leon and Grover. Might, that might be it. Grover. Yeah, it might just be <laughs> it. It might just be a, a scroll that rolls down and it just says Leon on it. Very well might. And, and that game is an indication as of why. Game. I mean, that was pretty nuts. I mean, you get a, a 22 kill performance. Notice the the healer in that game, Mr. Pickles, at, at, at 4-1 in mid-20s assist-wise. That's a good, well-rounded team performance from Classified to seal up the set and seal up the day. Got a little bit more talking to do, so let's send it back to the desk to wrap things up. Thank you guys down there from the caster's booth. And, of course, thank you for sending it back up to me to talk. It's literally what I do the most in any of these days. However, classified... In fact, someone even say you're paid to do it. Oh, man. Oh, 
don't say that on camera record. That's a little bit. So that's a little bit risky. However, the fact is, is that classified come out on top, split stone quarry. What an amazing map, and also what oh, yeah. amazing play overall. It went to a straight game five set with classified coming out on top. Uh, it's when you end your set and you have a twenty-two and five Leon. Yeah, you're doing <laughs> exactly. you're doing things right. So classified exactly. being able to put a pretty bow on was kind of a tumultuous set. I mean, there were there were just some moments where it's like, okay, well, with the four zero and the four one, you're very much in the lead. You're very strong, and then a couple of four threes in the middle. You're like, all right, there's a little bit of work that needs right. to be done here, like just to, to patch these up. Right, exactly, and patch things up they did, but they weren't the only team to be able to patch things up. We're going to take a look at the full day schedule that we had going on today to see once again. Refresh you guys on what was played today. Flashpoint versus Eric Monitor. We saw that. Vroom Vroom bust down. Onslaught, Hydra Gaming, and finally classified A Storm. As well as all the other sets it was that weren't actually broadcast that you could see Xbox, PS4 Europe, PS4, Xbox, NA as well. Once again, everybody did extremely well. 3 0 Eric Monitor. 3 1 Vroom Vroom. 3 0 Onslaught. 3 2 on, uh, Classified. I think the one that, you know, out of today that we watched was probably the most impactful is Vroom Vroom finding that 3-1 exactly, over yeah. Bust Down. I that agree. one does actually affect standings, and that's the one that I think is the most impactful in terms of the league. Yeah, I do agree with that as well. And speaking of standings, once again, we're going to take a look at the standings right now and see what we have in store for us for NA. And we see that NA Xbox, of course, Hype Unit is still at the top 5-0, and oh, classified 3-3. Three and three East Storm two and four and DC Tourney one and five. Meanwhile on PS4, flip side of things, we got six and zero onslaught, four and two Hydra, two and four Strimix, and zero and six heated up currently. And hype unit. It says five oh, but it is six. They've been able to pick up at just as many. Eighteen plus minus three O's six times overall. Mm -hmm. So, well, just keeping things up undefeated for them. Not really surprising considering that a lot of people might know them. Previously, they were Elevate, now Hype Unit. Well, still running the show. Yeah, I mean, and on the flip side of NA, we also have EU standing. Cyclone, Room from Bust Out, Absolute Rain Gaming. Very first one being Cyclone. GG, Course 5 and 1, Room from 4 and wow. 2, Bust Down, 3 and 3. And WOW is correct because Cyclone is popping off dude they're doing so so well on the flips that's on xbox one but on the flip side of that ps4 five and one for flashpoint five and one for era monitor one and five for stush gaming and for aerial arise we also have a one and five score so pretty even on ps4 actually it's yeah. pretty much the same literally just flipped and I think that was the big one today. I mean, one mm. forfeit, I believe, from not being able to be there right. on time, not showing up for their set for the game one from Flashpoint. And then two really, really solid wins coming mm. down from Aaron Manor. I mean, being able to find that, that's a big upset, Agreed. I think, for this. It's changing things a little bit. The standings don't shift with them, but Aaron Manor being right there all mm. of a sudden kind of opens Flashpoint's eyes. You need to be number one to be able right. to go forward towards any land, so you have to hold on to that spot. Right. You definitely have to but lucky for the other teams in this case you still have a chance to because we're gonna take a look at next week's schedule to see what we have planned for the console league of course next week aerial arise stitch gaming offline but the ones that will be broadcasted once again at 11 a.m on monday flashpoint and area monitor bust down of room for them on slide and hydra gaming classified and east storm i was oh, sorry not next week's schedule my, my, my apologies yeah I, as i was reading it, i realized that this is okay here we go this is next week's schedule. This is, I, I was reading this week's schedule because I was like, wait a minute, hold on. But anyway, here we go. Flashpoint, Aerial Rise, Cyclone, Bust Down, Heating Up Onslaught, and Hype Unit Classify that's currently going on right now. I think Flashpoint, Aerial Rise will be pretty interesting. Cyclone versus Bust Down uh, is probably the must watch of the day. And then Hype Unit and Classified should be interesting. Like, I think classified with the right amount of work and the right amount of polish can maybe make some trouble for hype unit but that's that's a very difficult region to shine right. in just because of how strong hype unit is so right. probably a one-sided matchup but has some potential behind it of course i mean just like today i mean coming into this class five versus east storm of course some people were like oh well like and i was one of those people that was like okay well maybe classify you know well come out on top of this one is pretty much what you'd expect to see but east storm surprises also of yeah. course against hype unit that doesn't mean that they won't have their own troubles or their little trials and tribulations against the teams that will be playing next week however guys that's all it is that we have for you guys today in the paladins console league i'm fawn stefan and of course i was here with gore miser thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in hopefully you guys will stay tuned with us for the rest of the week and also for more to come thank you guys so much
iNav, powering the control room for the Paladin's console league.